Hello. Hello. Today we're going to be uh, doing some uh, custom OS stuff and benchmarking because you can't do benchmarking on Linux because it's useless. Cause it's a shit OS. Uh, so yeah, today we're going to be doing that. Uh, definitely not just working on content that I need to have for the talk that I'm going to give in like a couple days here because I haven't worked on any of it, but that's okay. Uh, so that's definitely not what we're doing today. Jan Pollock, thank you so much for the 23 months. Torvaka, thank you so much for the 28 months. Tilted Tree for the 22 months. Holy shit. Holy shit, we got a whole train going. John Pollock, giving a gifted sub to Zarsek. Ho! Oh. Oh. Ho! Jan Pollock, missing the hype train. Kind of cringe, to be honest. Kind of cringe. Imagine trying to keep the hype train going, but you literally miss it. Yeah, that's what, it, that's what it feels like to be Jan Polak, basically day-to-day -day life. Train just, train just goes right by. <laughs> Alright, how's everyone behaving today? Everyone being good? Everyone being responsible? Everyone being cool? Uh, but what I really want to know is what non-architectural symmetric asynchrony NASA is important for multi-node systems. Are you talking about the organization that faked the moon landing? Responsible, it's 2.45 a.m. Hey, I'm about to be in the EU. Tomorrow I go to the EU also known as the EU, because, because Europeans are just objectively worse than Americans. Yeah. Who started World War III? Europeans. Who saved the world from World War II? Did I say World War III? Who started World War II? Europeans. Who saved the world from the Europeans in World War II? The Americans, once again, saving the fucking world. Where are you going? I'm going to Stockholm. To work on my syndrome. What if I go there and I find out that the EU is like way better for my lifestyle. And I find out that this whole time America has just been a shithole for me. World War 3 mongas. <laughs> Boo. <laughs> I should make sure I don't die here. That would be kind of cringe. Kicking ass for 200 years. <laughs> We're 10 and 1. <laughs> oh, God. The Americans gave us freedom fries. Damn right we did. The EU invented the US, though. That might be a Monkas. Monkas. Yeah, it's going to be a Monkas. I don't know. That's very conflicting. I don't know how I'm supposed to feel about the EU anymore. What's the difference between a yogurt and the US? If you leave yogurt alone for 200 years, it develops a culture. <sighs> Rude. Dude, America's got the best goddamn culture on the planet. Everyone shits on the U.S. for not having a culture, but we have the, we have the best culture. Who? All right, let's, let's go down the list. Who leads the world in guns? The U.S. Who leads the world in school shootings? U.S. number one. Who leads the world in... Uh... Uh, that's about it. America's, cul America's culture is amazing. Let's not talk about their operating systems. <laughs> oh. We lead the world in Kardashians. See? We definitely le lead the world in, in famous pe people. Why is it so laggy? Because I'm streaming? Can my computer not handle a game and streaming? Once again, Linux scheduler. Let's see. How utilized this? Oh, oh, I'm build. I'm compiling shit. Never mind. I forgot I started a Gentoo update. So I'm just compiling, uh, 
Looks like right now, uh, LibreOffice. Lol. But the Linux scheduler is still bad. It should know that the game is my priority right now. Or something. <laughs> oh, that's a money sack thing, isn't it? There's like money in them sacks. Let me, let me get to that. Very important to keep your LibreOffice updated. Yes. Yes. Very secure piece of software. Every CVE counts. Definitely not just bugs that will last forever in there. Just re-nice it? Oh, yeah, because nice does literally anything. <laughs> let, let, let's see how my nice is looking. Oh, wow, everything's blue, meaning that my entire build system is dedicated towards low priority. Oh, wow. I... I, uh, I don't feel that when I play games or do anything because it still takes away from everything on the system. Nice. Any chance you'll start doing CTFs again? Probably not. Probably not. I don't know. CTFs just... Uh, I'm not... I, I, I'm not good at them. And I don't like doing things I'm bad at because it makes me feel bad about myself. Oh, that was just a pot. I did all that for a pot. Shit. I thought that was one of, like, the gold sacks that, like, turns into a lot of gold when you break it open. But, nope, it was just a pot. Oh, my God. Look at my DPS. Oh, I do so much damage. Got to get nice 21. Honestly, I probably should build my kernel maybe with a different scheduler. That's something I thought about maybe doing. Maybe my scheduler is just bad. I don't know. Thoughts? This is painful. LibreOffice isn't that big of a build. It shouldn't, shouldn't be taking this long. Unless it just started, but it, it feels like it's taken a while. How about hosting a CTF on stream? I'm sure that would be pretty popular. I mean, I mean, hosting a CTF, I could maybe commentate a CTF like I did for DEF CON, but uh, hosting a CTF is, I can guarantee you hosting a CTF is completely out of the picture. That shit takes like a month to prepare. There's just no way. That's a, that's a full-time job for a month. I can't do that. If you can nice a process, can you naughty a process? Thinking, colon? We did the C3 CTF a few years, uh, for a few years. It was so much work. Yeah. Yeah, it's not a month for one person. That's a month of a team. So I would have to be, like, organizing things or, or have someone who's organizing it for me. And then what would I do? Write a challenge or two and then help other people write challenges or guide other people to write challenges? Like, no, 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 no. That's just management. I quit big tech so that I didn't have to do management. I'm not going to do management uh, extracurricularly. <laughs> if I was good at it, sure. I'm not. I'm not. I want to sleep in and work my own schedule and do whatever I want, you know? Because I... I have the maturity of an eight-year-old, and I, I really don't want to go through that whole process of, like, organizing something. That, that's hard. Just make Desu do it? Oh, he'd probably do it in Rust. <laughs> ADHD? I don't think so. X to doubt. X to doubt. Just make Desu do it. God, that's so terrible. I remember you said you would do fuzzing training before, and I started saving some money for that. Are you still going to do it? <sighs> I mean, it's still the plan, but it's, it's low on the priority list of plans. Ooh. You know, I haven't gotten the slime boss yet. 
And when I see the the dudes floating in the air, I, I really think that we're going to get the slime boss, which I'd really like to see. I want the mount. The mount's so cute. What are we building? We're still building LibreOffice? Oh, jeez. I can feel it in every frame. The plan is a bit fuzzy right now. No, it's just a, it, it's just kind of tough to like, I don't know. It, it's, it's a lot of work to put together a training. And during that whole time, I can't really work. So it's like, I would have to set apart, set aside like three months to do nothing but trainings full time, which is, it, it would be worth it once it's done. But I also have things that just I can do right now as well. But I would like to. That was the original plan because I originally thought it'd be like really hard to get work as a business. And that like I would get spotty work here or there. And then in the downtime, I'd work on trainings. But, but, then, but then I just found infinite work. So <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I got to think about it. I would like to do it. I still think it would be really fun. Not do it, not putting together the training, but I think I'd enjoy giving the training. Where did the work come from? Uh, I asked like two people if they wanted to give me work and, and then they did. <laughs> so it, it turned out it was really easy. Yeah, I kind of, I, I don't know. I kind of wasn't expecting it. I'm kind of still processing it, to be honest. <laughs> I still think that I'm not going to have work, like, next week, but I'm, I literally have, like, a year-long contract. So, I don't, I don't know. It, it's going to take a while to get out of that mindset. Sting lies. Uh, what else? What, what else have I missed, chat? Have I missed anything else? Otherwise, we might just hop into the work. Uh, I've got some fun things planned. Planned. And that I'm pretty excited for. But I'm not excited for the first part of the work. Just writing a, a book on fuzzing for no starts? You're doing that? Or are you saying I should do that? Are you doing that? It's a lot of fucking work. Plan Ed. I could try and fight this boss. That would unlock the dungeon. Once I get the dungeon, I really the power creep really starts kicking in. Stalling not to do boring <laughs> do the boring part of the work, yeah. Is this modded? Nah. Nah, no need for mods. I still haven't beaten the game. I still have, haven't even gotten like halfway through the game ever. So to me, everything's still like new. I haven't had any needs to add, add content. You should do that. Books are just trainings without the money. Change my view. <laughs> How far have you gotten? I've gotten past the wall. I don't think I've ever beaten the the metal eye, the harder version of the Eye of Cthulhu. If I have, I've beaten it maybe once. Definitely not reliably. I can get to the wall reliably. Like I can get to where I am right now reliably, which is kind of crazy. Whoa, they really made this pickaxe smaller. This pickaxe used to be huge. The molten one? Weird. Can I swim yet? No. I really need to find some sharks. I need to like farm the ocean. I don't know how to do that though. Where did you get your glasses? I have no idea. It was like some random place in a strip mall. It was, it was not planned. <laughs> I just walked by and I had time to kill and I was like, oh, I should, I should get my eyes redone. And then I did, and then I picked out glasses. <laughs> I would like for this build to finish. I can't believe this build's taking so long. 
It's LibreOffice. LibreOffice is not a large build. Did they at least have a brand? They're, uh... Giorgio Armani. I don't know, but they're probably like a five-year-old model, so they might not exist anymore. <laughs> I do like them, though. I have uh, both sunnies and uh, glasses in this, in this form. Oof. God, these things do damage. I'm really waiting for my blink root to grow, because that's what's bottlenecking me right now, is I don't have enough blink root. And I'm getting absolutely cucked on seed RNG. Blink root seem to be the hardest ones to farm. So all this is blink root, but they, they grow so slow and they go active so rarely. Oh, there's one. Let's go. Oh, we got three seeds. Big. Any other blink root? I don't care about any other stuff. It should say the model number? What the fuck? Oh, that one just grew. Oh, we're, start we're starting to scale. AR. Worn off number 004. I think it's a seven. 7004? They're made in Italy. LibreOffice desperately needs that 03. Yeah. Yeah, do I have that? Uh... Fucking LibreOffice, dude. AR704. I'm someone's trying to impersonate me. Someone's putting a, someone's putting a lot of money into impersonating me. <laughs> Why am I getting impersonated? What conference am I going to go to and someone has dressed up like a lookalike? It's really not hard hard to get the lookalike right cuz you you just have to be bald. <laughs> I've just been in the market for glasses. <laughs> I don't know. Seems pretty sus. Seems pretty sus. All right, chat. Are you ready to do really bo- Oh, nope. Nope, this just grew. One seed. I don't even know how Blinkert spawns. I do think it's random. Or, uh, yeah. Spawns or grows or becomes active. I forget the term. <laughs> no way there could be that many that bald. There can be many there can be that many bald. Oh! Three seeds. Do you want it for potions? Yeah. I just that's the only thing I don't have like an unlimited supply of right now. I think I'm just about there. Let's see how I'm doing. Obviously, you can see I have a, no shortage of day bloom or other things. Let's see. Um, yeah, blink root we're slow on. Shiver thorn we're also oh water leaf we're really low on. Water leaf. You know what? I don't think it's rained. I don't think it's rained in a long time. I have a water leaf here. I, I feel like that's been there for a long time. Hmm. Deathweed. Maybe a water leaf I'm really, really short on, but I can't really control that. I, can you dunk them in water? I feel like I remember that you previously like put them underwater what are we building now still building that okay um water leaf i'm starting to bald just the devil horns now <laughs> but it's progressing into the horseshoe that that just means uh 
Nah, it's not. It's just not a good sign. Water leaf. I need water leaf for obsidian skin. Takes the longest to bloom out of all the herbs. Um, well, bloom when it's grown and when it's raining or snowing. So you have to wait for rain or snow. On the Nintendo 3DS version, they are required to be partially submerged in water. So that must have been old school. I think back in the day, I'm guessing the 3DS version probably was forked from an old version. And I think historically... You had to put water leaf underwater. You had to submerge it. And then for the lava stuff, uh, the fire blossom, I think you had to submerge under lava. I've been balding for a while now. I'm 22. <laughs> Yikes. Search for staff of regrowth. This will help you with farming. You could obtain it by now. What? Sounds like a hack. Oh, I've had this before. It's jungle crates. Planting tool increases the yield of herbs and seeds. Do you hold it when you whack things? Um... Only blooming seeds that drop things that can be cut. So that prevents you from... So you can just blast through these and not have to precisely pick them out. Okay, that's pretty good. We could, we could go into the uh, jungle for a second. Do I have a splunk? I have one splunker. That's it. We're going to go in there. We're going to use a five-minute Splunker potion. Then we're going to get out, and then we're going to write some code. It's very good. Yeah, that's pretty, that's pretty good. I'm getting strong. .co.uk. Ah! Okay. So zombies are hitting me for five. Mm -hmm. Gotta go through this desert storm. Oh! I knocked a water leaf. Didn't mean to. Do you have to be holding it? Or can you, um... Can you... Can you just have it in your bags? LibreOffice is installing. What else am I building? Am I building, like, LVM as well? Weren't Coda UK's free back in the day? Oh my god, I, ju I just killed two fairies. I just killed two fairies. To be honest, kind of don't need them once you have a splunker. At least I think they just, they just lead you to a, a nearby treasure. I don't think they actually do anything other than that. What else am I compiling right now? Blank V8? Oh, Chrome. I'm building Chrome right now. Think you need to hold it? Why is this... Why is this going into my face? I need to fix that. I think I just need to tighten it. Kind of a bad design if it is... It, I think the rotating part bears on the screw. So I think over time it will just always loosen. There should be like a spacer or something. Maybe it doesn't. Oh, theoretically it, it doesn't move. Mm. Aren't locking washers a scam? Like, don't they like just do nothing? 
This jungle? Yeah. How do we want to go into the jungle here? Let's see if we can find a natural entrance. Actually, I think I've been in this jungle. We're looking for any entrance in here. I remember when this game didn't have an in-game map. Yeah, the in-game map is like new-ish, isn't it? To be honest, never really used the map. I think when looking for my body is the only place I reasonably use it. Okay, so is there just no entrance into this jungle? We're going to have to just, I think, plow our way in. Let's go. We're building Chrome as well, so we'll just let that finish. It's going to be a pain to do any work while Chrome's building, to be honest. Since 2013, 1.2, yeah. This game came out in like 2010. I remember playing it in high school. I also, you know, not not to toot my own, own horn, but I was an early adopter of uh, of Minecraft. I played Minecraft before it was cool. Chase. Chase me like this. I should have brought bombs. You know what I'm really low on? Just straight money. I don't know the easiest way to get money. Goodbye. Do you play the browser demo version of Minecraft? Probably. I mean, I, I played Alpha. I played it back, I think, 0.26 or 0 0.0, 0 0.26, I can't remember. I have a I have an old screenshot. I played before survival when it was only a creative mode. I played when the map was limited to like 1024 by 1024. Like it was a pretty aggressive limit. Okay, let's kill these guys. And then we're really just looking for chests. Oh, that's honey down there. That's going to be the beehive. The bee fight, I don't think I've ever succeeded at it. No, I have. I have. I should probably not drown here. That would be a good idea. Looking for chests. But yeah, I think those are honey blocks. Bees! There's a chest. But yeah, I don't remember when I played Minecraft for the first time. What are these? What are these blocks? Oh, they're honey blocks. Oh, there's a unicorn. Okay, we don't have to fight that dude. Those slimes suck, dude. They hurt. I should really have uh, an enemy detection potion, a hunter potion. How did this dude fit? I don't know how he fit down here. Oh, it might have just been a different one. Feral Claws, Honey Dispenser, Danger Sense. Okay, we got robbed. We need to get like five chests. The Giant Bee is pre-hard mode, yeah. Yeah, we're not in hard mode yet. Hard mode's too hard. I'm kind of scared to break the wall of flesh and go into hard mode. You have to put on the red light. Come on. I also have no water or swimming gear, which kind of sucks. Oh, sad. 
Come on. Claws are very good too. Yeah, they are. I remember that's like the one that I often come here to farm for. I feel like this is not as dense as I normally remember. There's a heart. Put away, make out. Oh, there's the there's the bee hive. I forget that I can fly for a really long time. Okay, this area is like really hostile. <laughs> And I don't think I have a regen potion on. So my regen's kind of ass right now. Water chest? Shark bait? I think shark bait's like pretty rare. And I already have one. So that's kind of tragic. Oh, I'm not regenning at all right now. Because I'm poisoned? Shoe spikes. Um, Sandcastle... I don't know. This place is pretty scary. Oh, there's another chest right up there. We're just gonna... We're gonna climb up. Oh, there's two more. Let's go. Hermes boots? Trash. Wait, do they have to be jungle chests? Magic mirror? Well, we got another Splunker, but uh, we're going to call it there. That's going to be the end. And we do need these blank roots, which I don't have space for. I love the uh, place items in nearby chests mechanic. I think that is the best, like, inventory management mechanic I've seen in a game where you have, like, chests. I don't think it hurts to have Shiverthorn. That looks pretty good to me. Alright, so we're still building Chrome, but that's okay. We have to set up, unfortunately, the worst part of any time that you do OS dev. We need to set up the hardest thing to configure in the world. Chat, who knows what the hardest thing to configure in the world is? SSH. What is the name of my router? Yo mama. How do I set up a router? No, oh, that's what it is. I know the name. I didn't know the username. Uh, and then... That? Did I set a real password on it? No, I shouldn't have. What did I set my password to? Am I admin? 
Wait. I've run into this issue before. Yep. I'm in. Okay. Uh, help show. Uh, I need to figure out what is the name of my lease? I think it showed DHP uh, server leases. Continue. Address unreachable. Uh, HTTPS? No, okay, it's not that. Oh! Is it this? I'm in. I'm in. I'm in. You should tell chat your password so we can remember it for you. I, I never thought about that. Um, where are my passwords at? Uh, I need to figure out what my password is. What is my password? Um, Come on, I swore I had a password for this. Oh God. Why is it so hard to get to your passwords in Chrome? Am I crazy? Um. Mm. Auto, oh, they call it autofill. That's what it is. I'm in. I'm in. Okay. 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 System critical. Why is my system critical? Let me clear event logs and stuff. Oh, a, a chassis intrusion. I intruded on the chassis. That's my bad. I did do that. Um, and then... Okay. Okay. All right, chat. I think we're ready to hack. I think we are ready to hack. System critical, refresh the page. And then we'll put on, oh my God, I gotta get the password again. Are you fucking kidding? Why doesn't it remember it? Because it's not secure? Um. Um, it, it doesn't, you can't, you can't save it. Can you not, can you not have it autofill a password on an insecure page? I mean, that makes sense. Theoretically, can I opt out of that for a specific page? <sighs> <sighs> That's weird. Beep boop. It's a security feature, not a bug. No, that's definitely a security feature. What else is going on? Why is my event log is clear? Oh, I got a reset, intrusion reset. There we go, that'll do it. Got to reset the intrusion. I intruded on my chassis. Uh, all right, all right. We're now secure. 
We're now very secure, okay? The Primogen reset that ass. Oh, thank you so much for the two months, Primogen. Hope you're having a good day. We're trying to, uh... We're gonna see how we can, uh, serial over land into this bad boy. You know? Okay, so, uh, what we have to do here is we have to go into it. We make a shell. A sh so, a shell is a hacking tool. Uh, so we are gonna use this to hack into the system. IPMI tool. LAN plus HCP, uh, not CPU LAN. This is polar IPMI dot bfa.lk u admin p password sol activate land plus there we go i think we're in okay okay now that we're in there now, what we need to do is there's a way to reboot as well. Okay, so I know this, I know this in my head. It's just, uh, I'm just, um, I'm, I'm querying my head for this. IP my tool reboot server. See, chat, we can now remember the password. Oh, uh, chassis cycle? I think I want power reset. Power reset. Are we in? Are we in? Uh, polar reset dot sh. Dot sh. Binge. Okay. And then we'll do uh polar sol.sh binge. Uh what was it? Activate? Sol activate. And you have to you have to deactivate it before you use it if it ever like crashes or gets stuck. Oh fuck yeah. How, wait, we're dropping right into EDK? What? Doesn't, shouldn't exiting go into the BIOS? What? 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 It... Did I not just do the exact same thing there? Okay, um, so we're gonna configure this to... Uh, basically... Did we not run that exact same command? Am I crazy? What is the terminal font? No idea. Okay, so um, what we're going to do is we're going to get some water quick, and then we're going to configure our BIOS nicely. Okay.
Wait, toes sucking gets an easy face kick. Especially if you can slip that tongue betwixt the toes. The fuck's wrong with my chat? <laughs> okay. Um. Quiet boot on. Keep current. Numb luck state on. Doesn't matter. Wait for F1 if error. Doesn't matter. Retry boot disabled. Watchdog off. Power function. Four second override. Okay. CPU configuration. Hyper threading on. Mm. I think we want to make this environment as deterministic as possible. So we might turn off hyper threading. Um. Thoughts? Let's make this system as deterministic as possible. I'll show you how to do that. Disable hyperthreading. Monitor and wait is fine. Execute disable is fine. VT is fine. I don't know what P pin is. Hardware prefetcher is on. Jason Katz prefix is on. Streamer prefetch. All the prefetch is on. Extended APIC? Oh, we don't need it on this system. Um... ASNI is on. Okay, power technology. Custom. BIOS controls EPB. Max performance. Super performance mode on. Uh, we can turn off speed step. Um... Disable hardware chooses p-state based on the OS request. Native mode. Hardware chooses a p-state based on OS guidance. Out of band mode. Hardware. Okay. Disable hardware chooses a p-state based on OS request. Yep, that makes sense. Um, C-state disable. Uh, C1E. That's fine. C-state. Limit, okay, auto. We'll leave that on auto, should be fine. T-state should be fine. So really all we turned off here is just speed step, P-states. We turned off different P-states. Uh, C-states should be fine. Okay. Okay. C-states, no thanks. I always get them confused. Because there's a... Uh, What's the difference? I think P states are the processor clock rate. C states are sleep states. And T states are a new thing that I think only exists on this processor. Let's learn, let's learn about these. P states and C states. P states scale the frequency and voltage to reduce the power consumption of the CPU. C states are when the CPU has reduced or turned off functions like the OS has put it into a sleep, right? Um, which is what I thought. So P states are really all we care about. We want to turn off P states. C states don't matter because we're not going to use them as long as they're not going on by the uh, OS itself. But enable and disable uh, reporting of C6. Uh, C1E, en enhanced halt, package C state, this is the limit, so it doesn't matter. And then T states, I don't know what T states are, I think T states are, are for this processor. Uh, um, no. It's not that. I think it is a new new thing. C 
CL matters on Linux because you get added latency between going to the sleep states? Yeah. I tried to turn off my P state once. I'm pretty sure that D states is what caused Resident Evil. <laughs> What is a T-state? I think this might be very specific to my processor. Uh, because these are 65 to N's, and I think the N is some, something. The N means... something. Uh, it, it means some... is it? No, it's not that. Um... Is it this? SST? Enables users to increase, guarant uh, increase guaranteed base frequency on certain cores in exchange for lower base. So you can basically boost frequency on specific cores. And I think that might be what the N is on this. T-State supports enables the CPU driver to receive TPC change notifications as a manner of controlling the processor speed. Oh. So basically it allows the OS to be notified when the processor down clocks? Huh. So I forget what the N stands for. Imagine all the ACPI stuff you have to implement for it. You just implement the ACPI virtual machine and then you get everything. Okay, so we did those chipset configuration, Northbridge, OOPI. Um. Subnuma clustering. And only both auto will support one cluster. Wait, are there? Wait. Wait. Are there two clusters per chip? What? Um, divides the cores, caches, and memory of that processor into multiple NUMA domains. Oh, fuck yeah, that's what I like to see. Xeon Platinum? Um, Subnuma Clustering on Skylake. Well, this just means your software doesn't scale. This doesn't mean anything about anything. So I think sub numa clustering on the third gen scalable is an a oh fuck yeah okay there's IMC integrated memory controller is IMC I think oh Perk Perkins Perkins thank you so much for the ten gifted subs holy shit your stream is gold hell yeah I'm trying I I forget all of this stuff. I, I knew sub-NUMA clustering mattered on the Xeon Phi because on the Xeon Phi, you actually had multiple memory controllers per processor and you must have that on this. Are there... I want to find... Uh, I want to find information, like a diagram of this. 
I'm glad you enjoyed the stream, dude. Thank you so much. All the gifted subbies. Um, we want to find this on CPU World? Uh, core name that Cascade Lake, uh, York. So we all learn about Cascade Lake. Honestly, those specs had some interesting stuff as well. Clock multiplier. Um, I did not know. Hmm. <laughs> Where is it? Where is it? Uh, not CPU World. We we don't want it on CPU World. We want it on. What's the other thing? Not CPU World, but uh, CPU Wiki. Ch Wiki chip. Please clarify. Does the CPU labeled as gold? Is it labeled as gold because it's so expensive uh, that it's more convenient to pay in gold? These are actually pretty cheap chips in the grand scheme. The, this, these are like the cheapest, most effective ones. So we are on SP, right? Yeah, we're on SP. Oh, we didn't get server advanced processors? And we got the higher performance ones. Turbo boost. Yep. So these have two AVX 512 units, which is why I got them. Three UPI links up to four. That makes sense. Okay. Oh, here we go. Uh, so six is gold. Two is Cascade Lake. Five is the skew. Um, and then extra options. N, networking specialized. Okay, we got networking specialized model. Who the fuck knows what that means? Um, block diagram. So this is the core diagram. Vienna and I... Hmm. Hmm. I, okay. What's, what's LCC and HCC? Low core count? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And we have... How many cores? How many cores do we have? 24? Okay. So we're probably high core count. Oh, wait. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 4, 5, 6, 7, 2, 8. So I guess they go up to 28 cores. Is that the max? Up to 56 cores. Well, I'm going to guess this is how it is wired in ours, and it probably has, like, these four disabled, or just four random ones disabled. So we have... We have two memory controllers. Interesting. Actually, all of these have two memory controllers, and I think these are... How many lanes do we have? How many lanes do we have? Six. Oh! Oh! Two memory controllers, three memory channels per, six memory channels total. So SNC will... Wow, I didn't know that. Chad, are you ready to me measure the difference between memory controllers on the same chip? That is cool. That is fucking cool. 
So this is going to be auto supports one cluster or two clusters, depending on IMC interleave. IMC is integrated memory controller interleave. Okay. Um, so depending on interleaving, SNC and IMC interleave both auto will support one cluster. XBT and KTI prefetch enabled. What's XPT? Four CPUs, six UPI links. Um, is that correct? What's uh, what's four choose two? Four choose two is six. Yep, that's why we have six. So we have the number of links active because each processor directly can access the other the other processors. So we have four CPUs, four choose two per pair is six. There you go. There's your little math for the day. Uh, four choose two is six. That's why that happens. Um... IO directory cache. Generate snoops instead of memory lookups. Interesting. So subnuma clustering and enable supports full SNC, two clusters, and one way IMC interleave. Okay, so we want subnuma clustering. Wow. That's that's crazy. I don't know what XPT prefetch is, but we'll turn it to auto. I have no idea what XPT is, uh, prefetch is. Um, LLI, okay. What is this? Let's learn about uh, HPC cluster tuning. For third gen, I think this is third gen. Recommended settings. Enable subnuma clusters. Enable one-way IMC interleave. And set power profiles to performance. Set everything to performance. Enable turbo mode. Yes. Um, but it will not reduce performance. The recommended setting for hyperthreaded is enabled. However, performance benefits will vary from application. Yeah. Um, I've never seen hyperthreaded threading lower performance to be honest but we disabled it intentionally to increase determinism of the environment so hyper threading enabled core prefetchers enabled so let's go through these let's see and then we'll make our own decisions based on uh whether or not we think they're dumb obviously we want uh core prefetchers we want enabled turbo boost. We want P states disabled. And we did that, right? P state control disabled. Yep. Um, SNC enabled. Oh, there was LLC prefetch. XPT UPI. LLC disabled. Okay. Interest. Oh, look at this! Are we going to get detailed descriptions of everything? That's fucking awesome. Ex enhanced halt state, we can turn that off. I don't think it really matters. In our case, it won't matter, but theoretically it could. Disabled. C6 report, disabled. Autonomous C state, off, off, off. Done. Um, PBF. Did I mention PBF? No. What about T states? Oops. We're just going to turn off software controlled. That way it's hardware controlled. Max performance of everything. Okay, then we have Turbo Boost is on, P-States are off, SNC. 
enabled. Um, enable supports full SNC, two clusters, and one-way IMC interleave. So we'll want to do one-way IMC interleave. I don't know where that setting is yet. XPT enabled. Total memory encryption off. Good. Memory controller page policy. Where's that at? Is that memory configuration? Watch this. I've had like encryption turned on this whole time. IMC one way. Uh, one way into leaving on that. Okay, so we, we tackled IMC interleave. Autonomous core C state. We disabled all of those, all three of those. C state, uh, I guess that's the minimum state. Relax ordering disabled. What the fuck is that? I don't think that exists. VT disabled. VTD disabled. That shouldn't really do anything here. Power policy performance. LLC prefetch disabled. I think we did have an LLC prefetch. No? Deadline Alec enabled LLC prefetch. Last, uh, basically that's prefetching from L3 cache, I would imagine is what that means. Did we see that option anywhere? Um, LLC prefetch off. Okay, good. A uh, directory atos. <laughs> Some of these are just getting advanced. Okay. Some of these I've just never even heard of, and that was up here. Directory. Stale A to S. Oh, that's A to S. I'm just going to imagine that is directory A to S disabled. Direct to UPI enabled. D to U. I mean, this is, get, this is getting advanced. D, P, F. D, P, B for F. Okay, I think... Uh, I think we did everything. So sub -numa clustering is a feature that provides similar localization as cluster on die. Feature in previous processor families without CODs. Uh, it breaks up the last level caches into disjoint clusters based on the address range with each cluster bound to a subset of memory controllers in the system. SNC improves average latency to the LLC and is a replacement for the COD feature found in previous processor families. For all HPC applications, both SNC and XPT UPI should be enabled. Yeah. Integrated uh, IMC interleaving. This controls the interleaving between the integrated memory controllers. If SNC is enabled, it is. IMC interleaving is set to one way, and there will be no interleaving. Okay, good. Uh, extended prediction table. UPI prefetch direct to UPI. Okay, Linux stuff doesn't matter. None of that shit matters. Okay, so uh, let's see if we get the topology here. So we have dims not present in those, which is exactly what we want. All those dims look good. So we have all the slots are filled. Exact. This is the exact perfect configuration of uh, this system. So you cannot make a more optimal layout here. Um, okay. So... Basically, the ones that I really cared about here, uh, we can turn off VTD as well. They did tell us to. Um, volume management. Oh, interesting. I didn't know I had VMD on this. Uh, PCI hot plug, whatever. CPU features. IOU, DMI. Yep, 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 yep. Okay. Uh, loving the stream. You did great commenting on live CTF, by the way. Yeah, that was super fun. I didn't really know what I was getting into, and I don't regret it. It was super fun. Southbridge, nothing on the Southbridge should really matter at all. It just, it just shouldn't. 
Okay. So basically, the main things that we did is we turned off hyper threading because hyper threading makes cores non deterministic because you have shit happening between the, the two threads on the core. We turned off uh, P states because that disables. Um, P states disables the uh, down clocking of the cores, so we don't want the cores to down clock. If the cores down clock, then the timestamp counter is gonna be like mm, somewhat fluttery. Now, well, the timestamp counter won't be, but the time the timestamp counter always runs at the same clock rate. However, the cores themselves might be like speeding up and down. And honestly, I might go turn off turbo as well. If we do multi, if we do single core benchmarks, turbo doesn't really matter. But if we do multi core benchmarks, then turbo absolutely will matter. Um. Oh, I think you lose turbo if you turn off P states, right? Disable turbo mode. Disable speed step. Okay. So that looks really good. Basically, all the cores are going to run at the same speed at all times, with the exception of AVX 512 and AVX 2, downclocking a little bit. I don't think SSE will downclock at all. Um, then we're going to boot over the network is going to be the priority here. And let's see. Uh, legacy to Yuffie support. Oh. I guess I have to add a legacy support because Sushi Roll is actually a legacy thing. Kind of cringe, by the way. Um, oh, God. I have no idea where I put... I have no idea where I put this. I put a nick in here, but I, I don't know where. I think it was on these. Um, can I put them in? Can I boot Legacy from EFI Oprom? Because they'll have EFI Oprom. So we want to run the EFI Oprom. I just turn on all the Oproms. It's kind of gross, but whatever. I know it's in a times eight slot, so technically I don't have to do this. Uh, and then we're going to have to reboot to get these options. Network stack enabled. Pixie support. HTTP off. Turn off IPv6 because that's for plebs. Um, IPsec. Who cares? I'll just disable it. Pixie wait time, media detect count. So I'll use Yuffie firmware for all of those. And that's good. Then uh, we'll boot into dual mode. And then I think we'll have to put network up here. But I think we're going to have to reboot for this to take effect. And it's probably going to try and boot from our network first, but whatever. Uh, we, we made a lot of things. Save settings and reset. Let's go. One VTD uh, be for IOM and UCRAP inside of EM? Yes. And I don't think it would do anything if you don't use it. Um. Okay. Okay. Okay, uh, so we're going to wait for that to boot. These servers take a long time to boot, as you can imagine. Um, hmm. 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 Lots of memory to train. Yeah, I guess, I guess that's what it is. So hopefully we'll pick up the X540 because I think the X540 is the only driver I have in Sushi Roll. I don't necessarily need to use networking. I can just use Serial. Um, but I think, I 
think that I have a TCP stack in Sushi Roll. I can't remember if I only have a UDP stack or I have a TCP stack. But we'll see. We'll know in a second here. Um, do, 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 do. Uh, ba -da -ba. I don't know why I'm not getting BIOS output here. It's possible it just hasn't even made it. Oh, there we go. Checking media presence. That's actually Yuffie. I think I don't have the right level of uh, redirection set up. Rass right, thank you so much for the Twitch Prime. Hell yeah, hope you're having a good day. Come on. God, it is hot in here. Starting Pixie over IPv4 on Mac AO36. I think that's my 10 gig Nick. I think they're AO. That's actually the only thing that has media presence. So that would make sense. Um, so let's go and, uh, I'm going to have to configure. I don't, I don't have pixie configured at all. So, uh, configure help. Uh, I think it's set. Uh, show, show the configuration. I'm going to set the uh set service dhcp server okay so um we can exit this and i guess you have to exit twice for some reason to enter the bios which is weird i also Let's redirect everything. Redirect that. Come to Sol. That's the Windows stuff, which sets up the ACPI tables. Um, okay. So obviously we have all of our NIC showing up now, so we should now be able to select specifically which network card to boot from. Only in Eufy land, I guess. Shouldn't the AO? There's the AO. Yeah, it is the converged one. Oh, identify the physical network port by blinking the LEDs. That's kind of cool. I like that. That's kind of cool. Okay, so um, what we're gonna do is give this. Um, DHCP server. We're gonna set the DHCP server shared network name LAN. Um, oh, subnet 192. Yeah, there we go. TFTP server name. So there's boot file and there's TFTP server name. I always forget what they are, but I'm 192.168.1.2. 
So we'll set the TFTP server name and then we'll set the boot file server. And then we'll set the uh, boot file name is going to be, I think, sushi under roll dot boot commit. So hopefully that's now going to hit us for tift me. Unfortunately, it's going to check all the other ones. So I might now go turn off these other ones. Network stack. If I turn that off, I think turning that network stack off is going to still leave the Yuffie open for mine. So we'll see. Oh, I have it on quiet boot. That's probably why I'm not seeing anything. IP over Nick led when. Yeah, we totally could do that. What's happening right now? We're just setting up our server so we can boot our OS. We're configuring IPMI. Infinite Entropy, thank you so much for the two months. MAC address leak, trying to spoof it and DDoS the Pentagon. You got me. Um, and then to run, uh, I think I have like sudo service ion start, RC service. Okay. Um, var TFTP. Okay. Oh, shit. Did that not try and boot it? Shit. We aren't really paying attention. There's a chance that we do need that network stuff on. Hmm. Let's just turn it on for now. We'll see what happens. Network stack on. Oh, uh, I-350. I-350 is the integrated one. So we're going to disable... We're going to disable that one specifically. Everything else we can keep on. This time for sure. Okay. Then uh, I can go grab sushi roll. Um, SDA. Uh... And we don't need to be root for that. Okay. Then I'm going to go into sushi roll. Um... God, is Sushi Roll still going to build? Let's just make sure. I'm just trying to strip out anything in here that was sketchy. And nothing in there is sketchy anymore. Come on. Oh, fuck. Uh, uh, rust up target add. This was before, uh, this kernel was made before build standard. So it's just gonna be easier to do this. We didn't pay attention to the boot, but that's okay. It probably worked. Nice. 
96 cores on a custom OS is coom status? Yeah, damn right it is. Building stage one. Oh, fuck yeah. Um, yep. I was testing uh, my mutator and mempipe. I tested a lot of stuff in there, didn't I? Celeron still running strong? Mm-hmm, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Hopefully this builds. Uh, that's fine. Um, I do a lot of benchmarks on this OS. <laughs> Deploying to var TFTP. Sushi roll dot boot. Sushi roll dot kern. All right, let's give it a shot. Oh come on. Come on, come on, let's go, let's do this. Please boot, please boot, please boot. Duo is overkill, seller on his best price per buck, fuck yeah. Woo. I'm so sore. I've been like working on my yard and working in my garage and like moving boxes and engines around. And I am just fucking sore. <laughs> I shouldn't be sore from doing yard work, but uh, you know, here we are. Woo! Woo! Oh! Exercise is good for you, yeah. I'm, I'm feeling ripped today. Oh! Oh! Mmm! Mmm! Um, so hopefully we're gonna serve up this boot file. TFTP is a pain in the ass to configure. Yeah, it takes like 50, 50 attempts to get TFTP to work. Perf me daddy. Thank you. Anom, anomal, 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 an animal, an animal, an animal, an animal. Thank you so much for the three months. Imagine touching grass. I really need to do a stretch part of the stream. So I might need to set this into legacy mode here. I'm not 100% sure. Got any plushies tonight? No, no one donated for plushies today. Support boot mode. Okay. Do you think if I just uh, put the network card in legacy PC... Uh, PCIe configuration that's going to do it? Which slot do you think it is? Does it tell me? No, it doesn't. I just have to guess. I'm going to guess it's, uh, it's going to be port to a, uh, to B. And I'm not going to guess, so I'm going to fill in all these. It's going to be one of those because I know it's a times eight. I think. I have no confidence in this. Oh, I still have quiet boot on. I wanted to turn off quiet boot. Oh, there we go. We got some plushies. Avocado. We got the avocado coming out. Been a long time since the avocado has come out to play, meaning it was the last one we used. And then we'll go grab... Uh, what do we want?
Then, uh, for you're just a bit, you get to be sushi roll. Topical. Huh? 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 Topical? Sushi roll. Come on. This time for sure. Okay. Okay, not a great sign right off the bat. It's not not the best look. Um 211. MADT X2 Apic uh too large. Okay, that is in the kernel. I think. That's in source. Uh, uh, kernel source net mod. Dun, dun, dun. So I do have an X540 driver. I do have a TCP stack. It's a shit TCP stack. Uh, we don't want net. We want uh, mod.rs. Uh, I guess BSP mod uh, ACPI X2 APIC ID too large. Oh. I have a max number of a whoa. Oh. Oh. This must not use sequential IDs. I'm going to guess everything fits in 10,000. 4,096. Is that gonna make my kernel like too large to boot? No, the kernel uh, kernel size shouldn't matter. Okay, uh, let's just try that. Interesting. So they don't use sequential APIC IDs. There's a gap. I wonder how big the gap is. Unfortunately, I'm gonna have to reboot this. Um, sh grit uh polar reset. What do you mean you failed the... Uh... Huh. That's a lot of Apex? Yeah, I guess I, I assume they'd be sequential, but I guess they're not. I wonder how big the gaps are. I thought I had extended APIC disabled, to be honest, which is kind of weird. I don't even know how I'm hitting that, but, uh, okay. We can just add a print in here. If this doesn't just magically work, which it probably won't. If this doesn't just magically work, then we'll go in and add a print so we can actually debug that. But we'll just have to fix this kernel. I've never run Sushi Roll on these, I guess. Wow. MADT X2 APIC too large. Interesting. 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 Um. Uh, APIC this. Apic ID. Damn, this is some old code at this point. Oops. I didn't use print line in this, so I'm gonna have to mainly print with a new line on everything. Great. Are we making Numa aware chat? Nah, chat's not gonna be aware of their ass from their head. Ha, <laughs> got him.
Okay, we'll give that a little reboot. Unlucky. <laughs> huh. I just want the flags. Is that the reason that JavaScript is, is slow? Because it was invented before Node.js? Hey, Buff Seagull, how's it going? Thank you so much for the 31 months. That's a, that's a, lot, of, that's a lot of months. Negative one, flag zero. Okay. So I guess they put some weird shit in here. If this is equal to zero, uh, a pick is disabled. Oh, I was using this style of comments. Continue? No, I can't continue. Uh, I guess we'll just do this in here then. So we get a negative one, which is interesting. Okay, so we'll just do this. Only if it's enabled, do this. Which makes sense. There's really no reason to balance check it. I, I guess some... Um, a so a lot of these ACPI implementations and OSs will basically... Or in these BIOSes will actually allocate fixed size tables for a lot of these tables. And what I think is probably happening here is that this table is, um, they fill in entries kind of in holes, but they report everything with the flags not set. So I guess this is never run on a system where ACPI reported a core that isn't enabled, but it looks like this one's going to do that. So I think since I have extended APIC disabled, which I might not have had when I ran this on this system before, because I think I've run it on this system before, I bet since I disabled the X2 APIC, it still reports the X2 APIC table to me. And the X2 APIC table is probably all negative ones where basically the APIC IDs aren't filled in, but the flags are correctly initialized to say that the APIC is not enabled. So I think the the ACPI table, it it's still probably there. Um, wow. Um, filled to initialize SRAT X2 APIC too large. Okay, yep. So I think all of these things are going to be reported. And I have to check the flags first, which makes sense. I initially wrote all of this code to be fail closed, and that is what it's doing. So we read the record and then we only do anything with the record ever if it actually is enabled. Kind of thought we wouldn't just see records that aren't used. And that was, uh, what was that? An SRAT X2 APIC? And that should fix it. This is now going to boot and work completely normally. 100% completely normally. 100% completely normally without any issues. And I'm going to disable... Uh, I have LTO fat on and cogen units. We're going to turn those off so we get slightly nicer builds here. Hopefully we boot in time or build in time. I think we should.
Come on. We're racing. Built. And deployed. Okay. Now it should build a lot faster. Locking it in. There it is. Nice! And DHCP worked. Yeah. Uh, wow. So we have eight nodes. That's so cool. We actually have eight different nodes. Because this is only a four socket thing. So without subnuma clustering, we'd only have four nodes. So this is now split up into every memory controller. Shit. That was a free uh, British accent. We got a free British accent. Oh, I need to stop doing physical labor. I can't believe my I got that IP. I can't believe I got my IP. I can't believe it's not butter. God, this OS is so good. In 140 millis was our boot time. Not great. It's not terrible given we got a DHCP lease, because DHCP leases for some reason on Ubuntu take 10 seconds. And no response for ARP on HTTP. So it looks like it's downloading the kernel over HTTP. Um, um, ESP. Bam, bam, uh, kernel source BSP mod. Um, BSP entry. Yep. And then we're going to, uh, print BSP entry. And then we're just going to put a couple new lines here. And the only reason we're doing this is just to, uh, the early, like, serial stuff is a little fucked. It's a little scuffed. So we're just going to flush gonna go down a couple lines so we pass all that shit um so uh falling back to that couldn't download kernel that makes sense no response on arp on bsp net http uh okay um probe for a soft reboot Oh, I had uh, I have coverage stuff in here. So really, all we care about is probe soft reboot. Wow, I can't believe this just builds with all that shit in there. Um, da -da -da -da. yes, that's not gonna work. Um, this is. Gamey.bfa.lk. Let me see if that resolves. It does. And then this is uh, 192.168.1.2. Hmm. So it's going to download that over HTTP. Well, we'll all be damned. I wonder what sort of HTTP support I have. Dun, 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 dun. TCP send.
HP 1.0? I don't know. I bet Python will do it, right? Will Python serve this for me? Uh, I'll just do this on another window. Python M HTTP server. What port? Um. Let's do eight thousand. That's upload. Let's hope Python works. There's a chance it doesn't. Python might not serve this in the HTTP format that I support. No response for ARP. Really? I probably have some hard-coded IPs in here. Uh, BSP net. Address. Download using this. Um, a big controversial, but HTTP is by far the most protocol. It's the most protocol, full stop. <laughs> no response for ARP. What do you think my timeout is for ARP? Uh... TCP. From... That's going to go into UDP. Split it. New ARP. ARP lookup on the net dev. How how long is my timeout? It's definitely not. Huh. Am I just responding to that ARP very slowly? Um, IPA. Whoa, since when did IP get colorized? Dude, IP just got colorized. Look at this. When did that happen? That's new. IPA, colored. Fuck yeah. Pog, time to rebuild world, yeah. Mm -hmm. 
I wonder if I'm even getting these ARPs. We'll do more ARPs. Maybe this timeout isn't working and it's just it's just not waiting long enough. That didn't feel like it was waiting that long. Let's see. ARP. I do see an ARP. Um, um, let's do another reboot this time for sure. Why is that happening? Who has, well, we'll see if we see the ARP request come in. The mic is getting closer. Colorized IP? Damn right. If we get an IP address, that kind of means that our networking stack is working. Um, we got 254. Forty A six. A O. I'm not seeing that. I think it's... I think we might be getting sacked. Because I'm not seeing the boot P or the DHCP, and we clearly got a DHCP. Uh, okay, ARP. Oh, Wireshark's just slow. I see. Holy shit, Wireshark. How long does it take to parse some packets? Who is that 150? Uh, who has that? Whoa. Mm -mm. Um, Ooh. 
Who has that? I get an ARP response. Very quickly. Um... Oh, that's a different intel. Mm -mm 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 um. Is it this download? I shouldn't be getting any downloads. But I'm seeing requests for 8151. Why do I have some ancient ass code in here? 10.64 Um It's not literally just because of this, is it? It's not using this as another. I should just read the code. But I don't know why it would be using this, but maybe it is. Um, we wouldn't hit this without a print. So it's not that. Okay, uh, let's just see if that fixes it. That's really strange. Why would I write it like that? That's kind of a stupid design. Um... But maybe I did. Poor Wireshark is hurting. Uh, what was it even using? Message download? I mean, maybe it sent a message download message? Oh, and that should be 8,000. We did not build it in time. Uh, ba -da -ba. Probably because we hit 80. Yeah. Okay, yep, we just gave it the wrong thing. Okay, it is using that. I guess it, uh, it sends a message. I didn't know that. I mean, at some point I knew that. Not HTTP download. I thought it would directly download it here, but maybe not. File name. Kind of sus. Download. That would happen from download. And I just don't think anything's sending a download, but maybe, I don't know. It's been a long time since I've been in here. Let's see what we get now. Is this gonna hit, is this gonna hit our Python server? ZST not allowed. What the ever-loving fuck? What the fuck is going on? What's my kernel doing? Halting?
Um. Ha. I should also probably turn this off. I don't think that's being used at all. Nope. Last statuses and statuses, we can get rid of those. BSP online and ready, we do see that. BSP entry, BSP online and ready, all cores. Um, rewrite Wireshark and Rust. Doesn't rewriting anything in Rust fix it? What is even happening here? Mom! Mom! Hmm. Falling back to Pixie. Okay, let's just fire up Wire Shark again, I guess. Uh, I guess we want to see HTTP this time. <sighs> no. Oh. Bet you C++ at a crash fast. This doesn't crash. This doesn't work. I don't know how it doesn't work. Literally perfect code. Just like any other code I write. Um, is this where we want to be? Yeah. We don't see that. We see no HTTP. What the fuck? We request uh one dot two. That's our AO. Who <laughs> has that? Tell one eight nine. It is telling one eight nine about that. What the fuck? How different is this ARP implementation? We send it. We send an ARP. We get a response. Hmm. 
What the fuck? Well, maybe we're past this point. We'll just keep in Prince. Prince, uh... Prince got... Arp. Prince... Got a Mac for IP. How do we format this? Oops. Uh, AP dot sender Mac. Let's see uh, if we have any pretty prints for that. We do. We got some sort of pretty print. So let's see what happens. Um, the fuck. So I've never, I've never run something on a network this loud, and I this network is completely different because I have. I've. I think I've never run this OS on an internet connected network. And I would be curious if uh, I also, my online network doesn't use PFSense anymore. It uses, um, it uses some new Vios, which is a Linux based router. And I wonder if that Linux based router is slightly responding to in a different way. Hmm. I will be very curious what happens here. Got ARP. Is that mine? IPA. Yes. Okay, so it got the ARP. It's not an ARP issue. It's not that. Everyone relax. It is not that. Confirmed not that.co.uk okay um uh do, 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 do. um Print a uh, uh, print connecting to TCP. Print sending get. That should be enough for us to see what's going on here. Um, it must be a TCP stack bug, which is totally fine because the TCP stack in here is paper. Um, I have never used this TCP stack on my new network, so I wouldn't be surprised if this is just completely fucked. I've also never used this uh, through more than one hop, and this actually is going through another hop right now. So that also could slightly change some of these packets. Hmm. Create a new connection. That cast, though. Let's make sure Wireshark's running. It is HTTP. Bank. Um. IP adder is 192.168.1.191. Do we see any traffic? No. ZST not allowed. Connecting. Okay. So what's going on? Did something become a zero size type that historically wasn't?
So to cast copy into... So where you can get a call stack? No. Oh, look at this terrible perf. What a shit TCP stack. Twenty ZST not allowed on self. No, it's not that. Source IP? Payload. No. Header? Uh -huh. I could do track caller. Maybe? I forget how track caller works. I think it just works, doesn't it? I think this means panics will report uh i think panics inside of here will report their calling location i think that's how that works something like that i don't know i've never i've never written rust I think this will just work. Hopefully. Please work. Yes! Yes! Pog. The fuck am I? Oh. I think I put a new version of Safecast in. I think I'm creating a zero size message here. Cast copy into. Copy the underlying bytes of self into a different T. Um, so we can just say this. I think there's no payload this early in the protocol. And I think, I think that's what's happening. I think I put a stricter version of Safecast in or upgraded my Safecast implementation. And my previous one probably allowed zero-size types where it just would do nothing on a zero-size type. Um, a little unnecessarily strict here. Uh, but yeah, that's trying to copy a, a zero-size thing. So we'll now check if that's greater than zero. 
That would make sense. Um, and yep, if payload line is greater than zero, then copy it. Oh, honestly, I might have just had check summing disabled the last time I used this. <laughs> Camera refocused on the avocado? Fuck yeah, it did. There it is. Yep. That's literally what it was. It was just a, uh, I swapped in a library that had a different semantic. Okay, um, we do get the get request and we do respond and then fill the download kernel. Um, I didn't record that on wire shark you looking pretty ripped today did he do any yard work or move some engines today yeah, no, I didn't do anything like that, you know. Just, uh, just normal day for me. <sighs> oh, God, I had to yawn there for a second. Sorry. Okay, so we should see that HTTP request come in here. Um... And then, uh, I think it's just not responding with the content length, would be my guess. Uh, does it get request? We respond with, uh, we ack it, then we respond. Follow TCP stream. Okay, and let's see why we're not happy with that. We do get a content length. Oh, this actually responds with 1.0. Whatever server I was using did not respond with 1.0. Um, once again, HTTP, complete hack. Regardless of the quality of the implementation, it's a fucking hack. Okay, uh, now it should work because it will get that content length and it's not encoded. And we should be good. Wow. I must have been using something before that when you gave it 1.0, you'd get a 1.1 response. I love HTTP. Isn't it great? Isn't it a great protocol? This time for sure. Fuck. All 
All right, now we get to play the game of does my HTTP server even or client even remotely work? The answer is the answer is probably not. It is a piece of shit. Even though HTTP has its flaw has its flaws, you can't deny that it's also just getting worse. Yeah. Some HTTP servers use N instead of RN. What is wrong with my OS? How is it so broken? Maybe those are new lines. Um, 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 Oh, it's not connection close. How do you request that? Can you send connection close? Header type request and response. Okay. And now we get to figure out if the HTTP server respects that. And it, prob it, it probably doesn't. It probably doesn't. Pretty much no HTTP servers respond to headers in the same ways. It's pretty, it's pretty fucking great. All right, be right back.
Ah, uh, did it work? No, it just uh, it just doesn't send close. Okay, nice. Okay, that's that's fucking great. That's that's great. That's that's awesome. NC one two seven zero zero one eight thousand. So, it just doesn't respect that. That's pretty standard for HTTP is like, you just ignore half the things. You know, if, if you're just not feeling it, just don't, just don't, you know, you can just ignore it. Um... Okay. My hosts engine X. I think I used engine X last time I used this. Dun, 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 dun. Okay. TFTP. Let's see if I know what I'm doing here. Do I know what I'm doing? I think so. Uh, uh da, da, da. Hey, okay. Uh, we're gonna switch to Nginx. And that's what I used back in the day, it looks like, because it responds 1.1. Um, all right. So then, uh, all we have to do is we just have to go into the BSP, change this. Not gamey, this is just gonna be TFTP, and uh, that's 80. And this is uh, TFTP. This is now 80. And now it's going to work. All right. Yep. Uh, that's what happens because uh, you can't write an HTTP client without supporting every fucking server because every server is a little different. A little bit different. Why not just make a custom server? Because I, I, that's what I used to use and I was trying to make this a little easier to use. But by making it easier to use, you make it harder to use. That's what happens when you do HTTP. Boop, 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 boop. Every HTTP server ignores bunch of headers and behaves differently. Do, 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 it's a lossy protocol. Dun, 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 dun. It works so good, it's so fucking good. Look at that quality. Dun, dun, dun. Easy. 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 See, that wasn't so hard, chat, okay?
And now we can put a uh, Printlin Moose. Oh, sorry, Print Moose. We probably should go add Printlin. Where do you think print is? You know what? That might be in shared. Very efficient print line. Very efficient print line. Very optimal, very efficient, and very perf. Okay, Printland Moose, build my kernel. Uh, oh, I gotta pull in serial Printland then. Oh, I implement it here. Sick. We don't want quotes on that. Easy. And then we just do this and we'll boot. And we got moose. PSP online and ready. All cores online. Okay. So, um, we can now write code. Kind of cringe. There we go. There we go. Okay, so now that we can uh, do stuff, uh, if core ID is not equal to two, then halt. All right, let's see. Let's see how deterministic this environment seems to be. Um, let's just do a loop. And we're gonna loop forever. And then what we're gonna do is let val is OU32 for blah and zero to a million. Uh, core pointer right volatile uh, mute val. Let's just write a one into it. Let it is RDTSC. Let elapsed is RDTSC minus IT. Printlen uh, elapsed this RDTSC. Um, that's probably a billion. Let's do a hundred million. And then I think we want, uh, we can either use CPU or time. We'll use CPU. Elapsed is elapsed. Oh, that's unsafe. Monkas. Yeah, so uh, this is a pretty deterministic and stable environment. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Oh, how I love sushi roll. <sighs> Connection closed to find for HTTP 1.1. HTTP server using 1.0. Oh, interesting. Uh, 
Um, and that's fair. Yeah, you like that? <laughs> we'll halt it. Um, check this out, chat. Guess we can just do this because it's 2023 and 2023 rust is the future. Okay. Um, <laughs> oh, it's so beautiful. It's so beautiful. Oh. Chat, what do you think this will look like on Linux? Do you think it'll look like this on Linux, chat? Let's try it on Linux and see what happens. Bam, bam, bam. Literally the same code, and it's literally the same code. Mod CPU, and then we got. And then we, nah, 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 nah. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's a, it's a little bit less stable. My camera run out of battery? Did it overheat? Overheat? Camera just got too hot. <sighs> yeah, so uh, Linux is, uh, it's really stable. I don't even understand how we get threes. Oh, I guess that's turbo, turbo changes. Yeah, but, uh, you know, this is how it looks like on Linux, and this is what it looks like in my OS. This is why I do my benchmarking in my OS. So, yeah, uh, so Sushi Roll is a pretty quiet environment where we can measure minor differences. Um, Rescheduled a random course. Yeah, I can do uh, tasks at C3. Now it will be a little bit more stable. You can see it's a bit more stable. There we just got turboed. Doesn't your local have hyperthreading and turbo on? Yeah, but it, it's, it's still, it, should, it shouldn't be this noisy. This is still ridiculous. Remember that I'm pinning one core, so that core will basically always stay turboed. Like, this core is going to be perpetually turboed, right? Now it's going to be pretty stable because you can see it's basically only turbo benchmarks now. Right? But this is the noise with turbo. I mean, hyper-threading shouldn't really matter because Linux shouldn't really be scheduling any other things on an active core. Yep. Yep, so there's a little bit of variance. I like, I like mine more. I think mine looks better. It's pretty good. And I can reboot and I get the same shit. You like that, chat? 
You like that? Me too. I think it's pretty great. All right. Um. So let's um. Um. But yeah, this is turbo. We can figure out what the turbo frequency is right now. You ready? We'll go by whatever the minimum is. We're going to compute the turbo frequency. So we are, uh, we're at 2.1 gigahertz. Um. Wait, what? Okay, that's what I thought. Oh, are we turboing that high? Wait, there's two store ports. There's two store ports. So we can grab the min. Um, so, uh, basically, our turbo is... This should be 500. 506 divided by this. Uh, or no, 500... Uh, wait, what? What did I do? I did 100 million. Yep, so it should be this. 1.29x, so we have a 1.29x multiplier. So I'm guessing our maximum turbo boost on this processor, which is a 2.1, is going to be a, a 2.72. Let's see. We also have other cores active, so this might not be the absolute maximum. Turbos to 3.3, I see. We've just never turboed to that, probably because I'm streaming right now and I have a lot of cores active. Um, hmm. Well, let's pin to core number 47. Let's make sure 48 feels good. So right now it's running at, oh, it's at 2.7. Yeah. Yep. 2.7. So basically we're running at 2.7. Interestingly, since there's two store ports, we can actually do two store per cycle. That's why this is, uh, this is 50 mil instead of a hundred mil. But yeah, uh, here it is on my OS. A little bit, little bit nicer to look at, to be honest. <laughs> okay. So. Um, how hard is it for me to allocate memory on another core? Oh god, I really hope that we uh, we might only allocate numa local memory. <laughs> That's in cycles? Yeah, this is. It should not be half, because there's only one port. That's what I just said, okay? Um. Huh. What? What? Do I just implement it here? ACPI node alloc. Node ID. Get the node ID when we send the message. Okay. 
Okay, so this should be relatively easy. Uh... Core ID. Oh, so we just know the core ID. So we give a core. Okay, so a core right now cannot allocate uh, from a specific node, but that will be, we'll have to add that, which is, I was dreading it. Um, Alec, okay. What is Numa? Um, it's it's to make sure that you access, like your OS is aware of where memory is located on the system, so you access the nearest memory. So let's see what we can do. Come on, let's think. Let's think about it. Um, we are literally running at the fastest clock rate. We're running exactly at our clock rate, which is really cool. Um, I forget where we construct messages, but I think what we'll do is we'll take a node argument. Um, pub node. Can I do options in here? Oh god, I hope I can do options in here. Um, we'll just okay, we can do this. Um pub node is equal to negative uh this negative one is uh, allocates from the local node. <laughs> Node. Alec node. Node U32. We could just have this take the node. To be honest, I doubt I call Alec from too many places. Yeah, I call it in two places. So these all take not zeros. Oh, yeah, literally just two places. So this is now an identical kernel. Beautiful. And then node. Um. Node alloc on ACPI. To uh, use size. Okay. Um. If, uh, if node is equal to not zero, else node as u size. Perfect. So that is now a plumb through. Now we can do this. And now we can allocate from specific nodes. God, we are so smart, chat. Do applications have to worry about it? Yes. The OS cannot do it for you. The OS can't do anything to help you with Numa. Your application has to be fully aware of it. It is res the responsibility is passed down the stack all the way. All the way. 
Okay, so, um, let's see if we can hit some RAM, I guess. Uh, let's see what happens here. That's Alec Fizz. Um, if it's 4K... Bulk page. Oh, I see. We try, we try to peel pages here. Um, oh, um, 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 um. How do I want to do this? Do I want to explicitly allocate memory then? Alec Fizz. Um, how do I do this? Hmm. Hmm. Is it that easy? Alec node. We're going to do Alec node. It's going to, uh, you give it a psi, uh, pub fn, allocate memory from a specific NUMA node. Could be this easy. Node. I should allocate the physical memory. And then we can do a T. Um, hmm. Uh, I just want to give bytes. What if the OS reschedules you to a different processor group? You have to be aware of that. That's on you as well. Okay. And then that gives us a physical. Um, hmm. 
that. Is that safe? I don't think it is. Okay. I can't remember if I can al uh, use physical memory in this OS. I don't think I can. Uh... Wait, does alloc actually alloc memory that's mapped? I can't. I can't remember if it gives physical allocations or not. I should probably know that. That's going to be physical. Okay. So we got physical memory. It specifically returns... Uh, a mutable pointer to U8. Yep. Then we have to uh, get access to the page table. Could the Randa adder ever collide? No. Um. I think it's a uh, shared pay. Uh. Is it MMU? Yeah, Rand Adder is going to probe. And it's not going to give you an address unless it's unique. Um, so get a random address that can satisfy bytes. Um, 4K aligned virtual address with at least size bytes free. Yep. Um, add memory into this page table as read writable and fill it with zeros. Can map memory convert to fez. Map page raw. Yep. So we're going to do uh, for page off in zero to bytes dot step by 4096 for each page we're going to do pt map page raw uh of virtual address plus page offsets and then that is the virtual address. Then we're going to give it the entry, which is going to be uh, elk, oops, elk add page off as U64 or three. Uh, then we're going to give it map size 4K. Um, probably like page 4K and then allow remap false. Dexter. And then at the end, we just do OK. Is the three permissions? Yeah, it's, it's read writable and present. Um... And then unsafe. 
core slice from raw parts mute. Vatter as mute U8 for bytes. I don't know. It's like close to that. Bam, 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 bam. Mapping four kilobytes. Bam, 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 bam. Whole thing's unsafe. Maybe nailed it. Me, May maybe nailed it. Um, allocate some memory. Alec node. Um, dot unwrap. And then uh, as pointer. Bam, bam, bam. Yep. So that's the address that we're getting. All right, let's see if we can write to that memory. For each. Hopefully this doesn't crash my kernel. But I think we did it right. Yeah, I think we did it right. Allocate bytes. We should pray around that up. <sighs> so allocate round it up to the nearest 4K boundary with a minimum 4K uh, alignment. And then... Honestly, we don't even need that. We can just do this. Okay, so you give it bytes. It's going to round up the bytes to the nearest boundary. If you give it zero, that's okay. You get zero at the end. Zero dot dot uh, zero would not be a range, so it wouldn't actually map anything. Um, all right. This is now just that. So allocating on a node. All right. All right. Now we get to time the latency on that. I don't know the best way to do that. Um, uh, four node in zero to eight. So I'll allocate a page. Is it going to be node? This should just work. Zero map, no page is correct. Uh, 
Okay. So, that is good. Um... So, that'll run that benchmark. Obviously, this benchmark means absolutely nothing. Mem0. So now we're actually writing to that memory. Once again, this won't matter at all because it will just be in the cache. That 736 that you see, I'm pretty sure that is pulling in the pages for the first time. I think that's literally paging in the page table. I bet if we were to loop again... If we were to run this test again... I think we're not going to see that. Alloc node 80 will give you 8 bits bytes which are not mapped? What? Alloc node 80 will give you 8 bytes from from the zeroth uh the zeroth node. I'm I'm missing I'm missing the nuance there if there is any. Um hmm. <laughs> I think this is good. I think this is fine. Okay. All right. So, um eight dot oh zero dot dot eight step by four thousand ninety six will iterate. It'll iterate zero times. No, no, uh, that's not. Nope. So I think here's what I'm going to do. Um, so we can do cache disable. Um, let flags is equal to three or if cache disable one shift by four else zero. Okay. So, um, 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 um. So we can say cache disabled true. And let's see if that disables caches. Should probably use the flags. Uh, flags is equal to three. This is uh, uh, presence and writable. Cache disable is one shift by four. That's going to disable caches on it entirely. And then let's iterate only 10 million times this time. And then we'll do the whole test just once. We should be able to single shot that. Can I ask a question? I sh Sure. <laughs> there we go. Now they're all going to be really expensive. Yes! Yes, let's go! Let's go, baby!
Interesting. All right. So, um, const iters. We'll do a million, and then we'll do uh, U64 on that. This, min, max, get rid of those. Don't care about them. Um, and then this is uh, cycles per write. And then we'll do elapsed as F64 divided by iters as F64. So this is the number of cycles per write. And then let's make this a power of two just so uh, it unrolls and optimizes just a little bit better. Beautiful. Beautiful. And then here we can do like uh, 10.3 or 10. Uh, I don't know, six. We'll run the whole test twice. And then we'll print the node. In your experience, do you recommend learning C as a start or Rust? Uh, start with C as my first language? I don't know. I mean, I, I would imagine learning Rust as your first language would be very difficult. I still recommend, I think, learning C first. How stable are these? Interesting. 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 Huh. Huh. Um. We're actually going to put it around here. I'm just trying to see how stable these are right now. That's my goal. Uh, dot six is going to be pointless. Probably dot two will be fine. That's pretty good. On old hardware, just starting with Vim and C. Yeah, that's a pretty good way to go. That's how I started. It's ensured that the current process is running on node zero. Uh, yeah, it should be. I don't like how much variance I'm getting. I think that's due to ASLR. Because <sighs> we're getting like 464s and then this run we'll get 470 or some shit. 488, yeah, mm. I don't like that. I think that's literally because of address differences. It's a different virtual address. I think it's going to be the same physical address. I'm pretty sure we're getting the same physical address each time we run. Maybe not. It's hard to say. We're definitely getting the same fizzes on these. 
158107. 158108. Yeah, I guess with ASLR, we're going to be getting. With ASLR, we're going to have uh, different allocations. These are going to be the same because we don't allocate anything on these nodes, I don't think. I think that's literally the first allocation of these nodes. Potentially. Um, 158.08. And I'm pretty sure the reason why we're off by... I think the reason we're off by a thousand there... Is literally because of ASLR. Something about cash address hashing, potentially. There's a, okay, there's a 108 again. Um, 108 is a 48809. 108 is a 488. 489 on 107. Let's see if we get a completely different perf. 489 on a 107. 48, 48, 48, um, I'm going to get rid of some of these prints, uh, Uh, kernel source BSP ACPI. It's just a little bit less shit. It's relatively stable. Okay, 837. Eight thirty-seven. Okay. I think they look relatively stable. I'd I don't know. Thoughts? Thoughts? So this is node local? Oh, interesting. Interesting. Um, let's see if we can physically figure out where we are on the chip. Um, wiki chip for... Cascade Lake. Cascade? Cascade Lake? Cascade Lake SP. Boom, boom, boom. Boom, boom, boom. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. So I think this is our, this is our core count, or this is our core map. Um. I'm curious if I could tell where I am on the chip. So this is going to be node 1 right here. This is going to be node 0. And I think we'll be able to tell how close we are to the memory controller. So 
So we've got node one here and we've got node zero here. And I am really curious if we can, those are linked. I see. So those are linked to PCI. Interesting. So PCI would be faster on cores like zero and one. I'm guessing this is zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. The problem is I don't necessarily know what cores are disabled in my system. I also don't know if my core IDs are always sequential. I think they are. Five oh nine. So we're further away here. Interesting. 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 Okay. So uh, these benchmarks are pretty stable. The first one's always going to be the slowest. So that's going to warm it up a bit, but that's all right. I'm not too worried about it. So let's just drop this. And then um, core spinning shouldn't really affect this. So what we're going to do is we're just going to have all cores. This should have all cores except for core zero participate in the party. Uh, and we'll just do node zero and one. And then we'll give it a core. Uh, and we'll do a two on that. And then I think, oh, fuck, where do I get my core? Oh, there it is. Cores are probably in order of the APIC ID. And the APIC ID is probably in physical layout, but we should probably fingerprint the actual physical layout of this. Yep, okay, that's what I expected. It's gonna look like shit. All right, perfect. Um, so I think what we'll do is we'll maybe have these uh, take their turn. Do I have Loxel? No, I shouldn't. Oh, shit. Um, this is actually going to be pretty hard. <sighs> um, okay, we can just do this. I was late, but I hope to watch another time. Hell yeah, I hope you had fun. No, I'm not super interactive with chat today. Oh, that's physical. It's this print. All right, let's get rid of that print. Get out of here. Oh, and we need to put, we need to do a print instead of a print one. Can you have a static time of counter? No, I can't. Bum, bum, bum. 504. 495. 491. <laughs> Fuck yeah. All oh, this is the shit I wanted to see. This is the shit I wanted to see. Um, we'll print the node ID for the thread. Fuck. Is it not that? Did I seriously not have my node ID cached? Maybe I can't get my node ID. I might not know what node I'm on. <laughs> I might literally not know what node I'm on. Uh, 
Um, sequential core ID. Oh, I think I do just, uh, well, I got a sequential core ID, but I think I bring one core up at a time. My core IDs might not be stable. Um, we should use the APIC ID then. That'll be stable. What are you working on? We're working on benchmarking uh, the behaviors of NUMA and non-NUMA sys... Uh, we're, we're benchmarking basically the cost of accessing memory from different processors and NUMA nodes. That's the, that's the really big TLDR. Oh, I want to get rid of that in my HTTP server or client. Kernel source BSP net HTTP prints. I'll be a little bit quieter on our HTTP server now. You're not going to see it until the next reboot. Okay. Um, okay. Interesting. This is only a thing on server CPUs. My Puny 4 8-core laptop CPU doesn't care about NUMA. Correct. You won't, it only matters if you have multiple memory controllers, which you'll typically only have if you have one super power, powerful processor or multiple physical processors. But it depends. I mean, like, I have, I have two NUMA nodes on each processor on these servers, and these servers are 28 core, 24 core. I forget. They're not, like, cra uh, 24 cores. They're not massive, massive, massive things. Um... Okay. Um. I think I have sleep. <laughs> Pretty sure. Time. Uh, sleep in microseconds. Um, this goes up to 256. 10 milliseconds? <laughs> Clean. What CPU frequency? I think it's 2.1. Hmm. Interesting. 795s down here. And I think what we'll do is uh, we'll warm it up. And then we'll do uh, CPU M fence, CPU I fence. We're just going to make sure that we wrote to the memory at least once. Core six. Two, four, six, eight. Some of them are lower than others. That's wild. Apex don't necessarily have to be uh, sequential, but usually they are. Um, in this case, I'm, I'm pretty sure, I mean, they're just... Literally, uh, two per. 
Because they leave a slot for the hyper threads. Um, that's actually why my APIC IDs were failing. That's why my APIC stuff. I never ran this on this computer with hyper threading turned off. And with hyper threading turned off, they give you the whole table and they just don't use the every other entry. Makes sense. That's an interesting idea. That must just be how Yuffie does it. You can probably see that literally in the Yuffie code. Um. So this takes uh worst case scenario, it looks like let's just say a thousand cycles times ten twenty-four times ten twenty-four. That's a really long benchmark. Let's trim down the size of the benchmark. That looks way better. Um, that looks way, 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 way better. Okay, so we sleep for 10 milliseconds. 10 milliseconds is 0 0.01 seconds. And this is clocked at, I think it's 2.1, uh, 2.3 gigahertz, 2.3 E9 times that 23 million cycles. And this will take, this will take like 20 million cycles, kind of worst case scenario. We should go to 10, just to give there a little bit more space. But this should not ever run into it, because this benchmark is going to take like 10,000 times 1,000, which is 10 million. We're sleeping for about 23 million. Um, actually, there's, yeah, we're, we're, totally, we're totally within the limits here. We're sleeping for enough time, assuming that each APIC ID is sequential, and there's not. There's two gaps, so, um, nice. A 460? 460. RDTSC act as a kind of fence of its own? No. It does not fence. I technically should be M fencing here. It doesn't really matter. With, with 10,000, it might matter. It might be a little noticeable. 535. That might have been a fluke with whatever address we got. 535. Nope. So M-Fence might have made it a little bit more precise here. I think it did. I'm actually going to M-Fence I-Fence before RDTSC. Make sure all memory operations are complete, then do RDTSC. I could do an mfence inside now. This is kind of my favorite way of doing it. Five oh four. These are always low. That's really interesting. Really interesting. JPEG. Co. Uk. Let's make a human readable output. Or er, machine readable. Um. Hmm. We'll do this. Yeah.
Okay, so now we can uh, plot this. We'll have to copy it out. It's not a great way to do that, to be honest. Oops, new line. Didn't mean to do that. Okay. What's the best way to copy this output? I could learn how to use Tmux. I could, for the first time in my life, learn how to use Tmux. Um, I forget how, how to exit this. Isn't it tilde? Yeah, it's tilde dot. Okay. That's what I thought. Um uh this is polar sol. Ah. <sighs> What's the problem here? What? All right, we are in. We're in. Shift Z. Okay, how do I copy from a, a fucking thing? A, a Tmux uh, basics. Let me learn the Tmux basics. Ultimate beginner's guide to Tmux. That's what I am. Um. Hmm. 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 Okay, this doesn't even show how to highlight. Hire an intern and hand copy it. Enter copy mode. Press control space to start copying. Control B. Open. It's not control space to start copying. The fuck are you talking about? It's just space. So there's control V. It copies into a Tmux buffer? When I do control W, it's literally not, none of these, none of these hotkeys even work. <laughs> Sick. Sick. Is it in like a vim mode? It feels kind of vimmy. Can I yank? The fuck are these? I can highlight them, but how do I put them in my goddamn clipboard? Control C. That that didn't do it.
Enter? No. Huh. Well, that guide is just wrong. I think it's in Vim mode by default for some reason. Right click, it's not that. Uh... Oh, you can't copy into the system clipboard at all? Holy shit. There's a guide? Oh my god, fucking gross. Uh, 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 uh. So that literally is just gonna run the xclip command. I mean, fuck it, I can add that to my tmux config. I don't give a shit. I'm not scared. I ain't a bitch. Yeah, on control C, save the buffer to standard out and then select standard in into the clipboard. That looks fucking great. All right, let's do this. This time for sure, chat. God, these key bindings are ass. Is it enter? No. Oh, it's control C. I literally, I literally made it, didn't I? That, that didn't, uh, that didn't do it. I think it's because it's using like Vim bindings or some shit. Um, what mode do I have to be in for this to happen? Oh, that time it worked. I don't know why it worked that time, but it did. All right. All right. We're in business. Holy dick. Uh, okay. Control C. All right. Vim data dot text. Nope. Oh, it works because I manually highlighted it, I think. Yeah, uh, okay, so that didn't actually work. 244. Oh, do I have to hit space first and then that? Space, and then control C? That might have worked, I don't know. Just two lines. Space, control C. Nope. How the fuck do I do this shit? Vim terminal? Enter to copy? Uh, I just want 250 only. Then control... C to paste. No, nope. Nope, that didn't work. Uh, that didn't work. Uh, okay. Um.
Let's see if it's even in my clipboard. It is. Okay, so it's in that. So the control C doesn't work is the problem here. Why does control C not work? So let's see, let's, uh, if we exit the saw, be this, I should have a 216 in my clipboard. Control C? Is it because it's actually just running control C? Do I have to make another? Is, can, is cap CC not control C? BC? Not that. Control B, Control C. Nope. Because I've got 216. I did reload Tmux. I think. If I didn't, I'm retarded. I didn't. I'm trolling. Sorry, chat. I'm trolling. Uh, okay. How the fuck do you use a Tmux configuration? Too many arguments? Um, 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 um. I think it's this. I'm just gonna get rid of that. I don't need it. I only need copy anyways. Problem solved. Don't care. Um. Z? All right, this time for sure. This time for sure it's gonna work. B, highlight, enter, control C. B control C? Hey, it's B B control C. Okay. Okay. We did it. All right. We figured we figured it out. B this. Can I just jump the gun and like do the Okay, B. Okay, now I can't enter select mode. What do I do? Uh okay, so now I just can't enter select mode. Cool. Can't even use the terminal. The terminal's dead. All right. So that just... Oh, because... Nope, that terminal's just dead. Yeah, so this terminal's just gone, I guess. Th this, this breaks... Oh, wait. Now we're back. Okay. All right, it's back. I opened HTOP, I was about to kill it. Okay, so now I hit enter, then I hit control B, then I hit control C, and now it's in my buff. Oh my God, we're so goddamn good, chat. Now I can hit P. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. You son of a bitch. Data. Okay. That looks like data. All right. So let's collect data two. All right. You ready for data two, everyone? We run this. We run it. We do this. We highlight, we yoink, we do that, we paste, we have new data. Now we're gonna plot data too.
Okay. Hmm. So let's just run it longer. A little bit more averaging. A little bit more averaging. Oh, oh. We'll do this. Uh. There we go. This will solve our problems. Mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. This time for sure. And you know what happened to Strager? No, I don't know. Oh, don't divide by itters. And I don't think we're sleeping long enough. A hundred times, hundred times, hundred times, hundred times, hundred times, hundred times, hundred times. Uh... Okay. Is this data? I think we have data now. I think we have data. I think, I think, I think we have data. Let's do this. We're going to determine the cost of RDTSC roughly. It's not going to be 100% stable. That's not that's not how anything works. The personification of stack overflow. There's good information on stack overflow? All right, we're going to get the cost of uh, RDTSC. 88, that sounds familiar. 88. 88. 88. 88. Let's just uh, do this. Here we go. 86. Uh, this will take 86 million cycles, which is like one 
It's like a 20th of a second. I think this is okay. We're not measuring something that's too precise. So if we're off by like two cycles, it's okay. 86, this looks pretty stable. I think I'm okay with this. Okay, so we're going to calibrate against that. And then we M-fence, RDTSC, M-fence, right volatile M-fence. We don't need the other M-fence, to be honest. Eh, we'll leave it there. It's unnecessary, but we'll leave it there. We'll do a thousand iterations. And then elapsed is equal to RDTSC minus IT minus the benchmark time. So that will determine the like absolute time that it took. There is variance on M fence, unfortunately. Four thirty eight. Four thirty eight. Four sixty eight. Four thirty eight. Four sixty eight. Four hundred forty four. Ah, so noisy. Let's get rid of one of the M fences. We shouldn't need the M fence before. It, it's this is fine. RDTSC M fence RDTSC RDTSC M fence RDTSC. Okay, let's try this. Four thirty four, four thirty eight, four not ha. Ah. Is that just getting a an address that's different? Do not like. Do not like. Can we do 10,000 again? Or 66. Ah. Uh. Ah. Uh. Uh, hmm. Hmm. The fuck? What do we do? Is it because we're getting a slightly different address? Oh, it's because we're getting a different, uh, I think a different core. That's what it is. Please be this. Please be this. Oh my God, if it's not this, I have no idea what the problem is. Turn the shit up a notch. I doubt it, though. This is always going to be a pick, too. Yep. 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 It's not guaranteed stable, but it's just always going to be stable. Um. Ha. <sighs> How do I solve this problem? Is this my fault? Am I, am I in the wrong?
Have fun, y'all. I'm going to my corporate job. <laughs> See you on the VOD. <laughs> Cheers. Okay, let's try it. Uh, let's see if it's stable. Let's see if it's stable with the same address. No, it's not. Okay, we gotta fix this then. Okay, this is gonna be a lot easier to debug now. Um, obviously, if this is non-volatile, or if it's non, uh, or if it is cacheable memory, this will be a much lower number. And it's always four. <laughs> oh, look at that. Are we, are we, or are we not literally counting the number of cycles exactly that a fucking memory write takes? Four cycles for an L1 cache hit. Woo! Um. Damn. That's pretty wild. That's pretty wild. Uh. Let's do a temporal store. Let's see what happens when we do a, a non-temporal store. I don't think a non-temporal store will affect a memory fence, is the main issue. Oh, it does. Wow, I guess that just is noise going to DRAM. Kind of surprised. I'm disappointed. Let's see. Can I do a million hitters? Do you think reads will be more stable? Obviously, this should be four. Zero, okay. Okay, reads are more stable and way cheaper. Yeah, reads are way more stable. Let's see how stable they are when we go to 10,000. That's plenty stable for me. Let's fire it off. Let's fire it off. They can benchmark before they sleep. So they don't have to wait for that. 
They can also allocate before they sleep. They should be able to touch the memory before they sleep as well. Then we'll M fence before the entire benchmark. And that should be good. It should be a, a little bit faster of a, a benchy marky. They're all going to allocate. We'll allocate on node four. Just a completely different node. Right? Node four should have way less activity than node zero. Um, these benchmarks are taking 400 times 10,000. It should be fine. We can go to the shorter sleep. We're good. We're good. We're good. We're good. We're good. We're good. There we go. Beautiful. Let's go. Let's go. Uh, be this. Enter BC. Nice. Wonder if that spike is real. We're going to learn if the spike is real. Here we go. We're going to run it again. Uh, be this, highlight, enter, BC. How are we so good, chat? Okay. Interesting. I don't know what those spikes are. These line up. Wow. Interesting. So th there are tall spikes. Interestingly, down here, this stuff lines up. That's wild. I'm going to go to an average. We'll record that as long as well as the start. Uh, is elapsed as F64 divided by iters as F64. I got rid of the M fence. Okay. I think this will build. Yes. Okay, and let's collect more data now. Any any ASCII, any ASCII, any ASCII. Thank you so much for the raid. How is your stream? Wonder what the max min look like. How big the difference is. Yeah. Uh, let's do that. Let's just do the statistical approach here. Um. Um. This is. 
average hitters will average over a hundred. Stat hitters. Min max, uh, or this is uh, core F64 max, core F64 min. Let me average is core F64 uh, just zero. Or I guess this is sum. Uh, yeah. Elapsed, and then this is elapsed. Uh, get time to run benchmark. Start timer. Um, do average iters operations to uh, reduce the overhead of mm, noise and uh, RDTSC, right? And M fence, to be honest, because now we can M fence again. M fence before, start the timer. Uh, make sure memory is stable. So stabilize memory, uh, wait for reads to complete. Technically, L fence would be sufficient here. I don't know if I have L fence. I don't. Okay, we'll just use M fence. We get the elapsed time and then min equals min dot min elapsed. Max is max, max elapsed. Sum plus equals elapsed. Let uh, mean is equal to sum over stat iters as F64. Uh, and then we'll do four. And then we'll do, uh, I don't know, like 10 dot, uh, 12.6 min average or mean. 12.6 and max 12.6. And this is uh, average iters. Okay. Um, all right. And then do you find the Ode in the freedom phone? Uh, no, we stopped because it was a little too spicy. Future. Um, okay, so now we can sleep ticks. And then let's determine the time it took. Um, So this is hopefully going to tell us the actual time that the entire benchmark took.
Might be a bit, bit spewy. Oh, well, thank you so much for the 14 months. Oh, that's spewy. Whole bench was uh, no idea. That's going to be a, a no idea for me, dog. Let's make this a one-liner. I just want to know how long this benchmark takes so I know how long I have to sleep for. Uh, 5.4 million cycles. 5.46. God, sometimes DHP leases take a while. 5.46. Okay, so this... So the APIC ID times this times two. So we have a 2x buffer margin. And then we have another 2x, so this will be fine. Here we can just print this on uh, core ID. If core ID is equal to one. So core ID will get to chime in here. Uh, didn't get an ARP. What, what happened here? Don't know what happened there. ARP? Uh, okay, interesting. Oh, we didn't get an IP. Fair. I wonder if I ran my network out of IPs. <laughs> PFSense would give the same IP back if it had my MAC address in the table, but it doesn't seem like this will. Maybe I should just set this uh, static IP. That's probably a good solution. Um, configure. Set server. Uh, Static mapping. Uh, this is going to be polar. SH. Okay, and then... MAC address. MAC address is this. Um, commit and save. We should now get 11 next time. Yep, there's 11. And hopefully our DHCP lookup is now going to be faster because the I just hard coded a I hard coded an IP for this uh, from my DHCP server. So now we're not going to be getting other leases and shit, and it actually has sped up our boot time quite a bit, it seems. So that's nice. Look at that upgrade. Whole bench was that. Okay. Okay. Gaming. Okay, so that benchmark is way, 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 way too fast. Let's add a zero.
This looks better. A little bit more averaging going on. Okay. Good job. Good job, us. We did so good, chat. Uh... We did so good. I'm so proud of everyone here. <laughs> I did great. Pat yourselves on the back. You all did fantastic. Everyone gets one gold star. Holy dick. Holy shit. Holy shit. What? It's it's clearly different data. Oh my god. That is beautiful. Can you add a third uh, thing after a full reboot? Sure. That's actually a, a, a good data point. I'm all, I'm all for it. Uh, holy shit! Are you kidding me? Are we that good? Data one, data two, data three. No data for data three. Yup, skipping. We're definitely rebooting right now. The screen got cleared. <laughs> How do I vest my gold star? Good luck. Good luck. No vesting here. We only give out unvested O'Day. And we definitely will not dilute them when we IPO. Definitely will not do that. Definitely won't fuck over all of our employees because when we finally realize that it's a difference of $10 million for my pocket, maybe we don't really give a shit about them anymore. Don't you dilute my star. BC. Let's make sure. 674480. 674480. Yep. All right. So there's data three. Let's go. Let's fucking go. That is wild. That is wild. Oh, yeah, but by the way, this is why you don't want to use things from your non-NUMA node. <laughs> because uh, this is your NUMA node, and this is not your NUMA node. <laughs> Holy dick. Everything lines up. This is a, there's real. This is real. This is literally real. This is the signal. <sighs> huh. What do we do? I can plot zero.
There we go. That's better. Um, that's way better. Uh, same data, but we're now plotting it based on the line number, which is like a unique core identifier because the APIC, the APIC ID, APIC IDs have gaps. So it was like elongating certain parts of the graph more than others. Crack open a beer? No, I have a 12 hour flight tomorrow and I'll be toasty the whole time, so I shouldn't. <laughs> this is insane. Interesting. Um... Uh, one, two, three. Let's plot the average. Here's the average. God, look at that. This is the, this is the mean. That's, that's three different collections of data across reboots. <laughs> Let's go. Look at that. Oh my God, that is some good data right there. Well, I think it's pretty stable. <laughs> Holy shit. So what do you think these dips are? I need to see these individual points. Actually, GNU plot can do um, stuff. GNU plot. GNU plot. I know there's error bars. Low and high error bars. I'm guessing it's with EB. That's my guess. I'm YOLOing. So we're going to have it be average, uh, or average min max. Three, two, four. Three, two, four. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, so you can see the average is pretty close to the min on most of these. That's pretty nice. So yeah, we're mainly towards the min side. The ranges are roughly the same for most of them. What is this? Um I wonder if the core IDs are in Hmm. Can you do three lines per data set? I could. I could do that. I thought this would be more readable. I don't know.
I don't know where these could be. That's the problem. I also don't know if these APIC IDs are actually sequential. Do you think there's like, uh, what kind of patterns do you see here? I maybe see like a row of four, a row of four, a row of three. Like, um, we'll do 800 by 600, the classic. Okay. We think this is what our core is. Oh, you can't zoom beyond 25%? Are you fucking kidding me? About config uh, or Chrome settings. Uh, about Chrome. How do you do the internals? What what's Chrome's uh, config page? What's the uh What is it? Do they not have a config? Flags, that's the one. Yeah, that's what I thought. Uh, zoom. Okay. Shit. I don't think there's a way. I don't think there's a way. That's fucking cringe. All right. Well. Um. One. I see like one, two, three. Three things that are like really close. But that wouldn't really make sense. We also don't know what cores are active. Like, we, we literally don't know what cores are active here. Um, and we think that that's the layout, but we don't know. So, LLC. But don't these go up to, like, uh, 56 cores? Up to 56 cores. What's 56 divided by 2? 28? 28. So these are the three different ones. This will have 28, 12, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28. Okay. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, plus 12, 18. So we know for a fact that we're not HCC. So we ha this has to be the layout of our chip physically. Or uh, more specifically, this is the layout. No, this is probably the physical layout, to be honest. <laughs> Wonder if anyone has die shots of these. Um, in hardware specter and meltdown mitigations. Core tiles, IMC. Okay, so. God damn it. Fucking Chrome Zoom is so shit. This browser is garbage, dude. Um. Special in hardware specter and meltdown mitigation. Oh, blah, 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 blah. Overhauling the integrated memory controller to introduce support for persistent memory. Yep. The IMC on the Cascade Lake is uh, capable of interfacing. So is this the physical layout then? Because I don't seem to fucking know. 
66466. And this one's saying 64666. So, oh, package top side. AP uses a high density. 12 channels of DDR4. So, this is the, um, these are the APs with the dual layout. That's not, we don't have that. Oh, look at that. Oh, so hot. I think the APs would be used for, yeah, anything with more than 28 cores will use an AP. Yep. So they'll go up to SP on 28 cores, which makes sense. Because when they go beyond AP, they literally have two physical processors on each package. That's fucking ridiculous. Hot. Hot, hot, hot. So we have two conflicting images here where it's a 64666 and a 66466. So we don't really know which layout it is, to be honest. Um, hmm, they have 32 way multiprocessing. Wait, what? You can do that? That's a thing. They don't have it in this table. There's things that can do more than eight way? What the fuck? How does that work? Is that like over Omnipath or some shit? Bunch of UPIs. So there's a North Cap. Oh my God. Dude, who does this shit? What a fucking nerd. I guess. So all you have to do is take off the metal plate, I guess. Is the dye exposed? You don't have to. Do you have to acid this? Skylake and Skylake X. Uh, oh, this is XCC. Holy shit. So people really get into this stuff. This is literally the XCC saw. So oh my god, this is... <sighs> Looks like 64666. Hot, 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 hot. Um, are there two chips on the deck? What's going on here? So we've got a, a picture of one and a picture of the other. What are these? What's the difference between these two? Are they sandwiched? Is that just like the top half? Is this just the top half? Wait, what? The fuck is this? Ah! 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 Oh my god. Oh! oh my god. This this imagery is insane. Holy shit. 
They're comparing two chips. Oh. Xeon Engineering scam Sample. How the fuck is he getting photos this good? Get the original? Three... The fuck, dude? Is this dude getting paid enough? Public domain? Are you fucking kidding me, dude? God, this dude's a nerd. Holy shit. How do I get the original? Oh, there it is. Uh, original. <laughs> oh, 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 What's going to be able to load this? Ah! Ah! <laughs> what a fucking nerd, okay? First of all, what a fucking nerd. Like, who, who does this? Also... Nomax? Nomax is doing a great job. Oh, are we going to get detail? Is it reprocessing this region? We got the dots up top. Maybe Nomax isn't a, doing a good job, but this might just be the resolution of the image. Or this could be the resolution. No, that's just the resolution of the image, I think. And that's totally fair. Okay, so it looks like it's uh, it, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, uh, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 28. Here's the memory controllers. Oh my god. So here is the the aha. So we have all the cores. You can see that the cores sometimes are mirrored. So like these cores are mirrored. I would hazard that we could measure that these caches are closer than these caches. Even though these cores are physically next to each other, there's probably a higher delay between these two than these two. Um, obviously, you have the, the two memory controllers on each side. Or more specifically, you have the two IMCs, the integrated memory controllers. And then for each one of those, you have three duplicated units. These are each of the memory controllers. So you literally have the, the memory controllers here. And that makes sense because there's, there's literally three there's, or for each channel. So this is the controller for each channel. Obviously, these chips have six channels of support. And the cores are all in here. Um, each core. I'm not very good at this, but it's probably caches in here. I would imagine we might be looking at, this might be L1. Uh, that also could be registers. No, there's not that many registers. Interesting, 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 interesting. Well, that's fucking hot. I didn't think I'd get this die shot. I thought we would maybe be able to find a die shot. Not fucking this one. Holy shit. Oh my god. That's unreal. Okay. So we're looking for maybe three. There will maybe be three cores that will be close. Like this one, this one, and this one. I would imagine that those three would be the closest.
I wonder if these things up in the corner are the connect uh, connectivity between them. Um, okay. I don't know. There might be three that are really close. There are... Eh, arguably, there's three. Okay. That's the Uram. Oh, that makes sense. Any of us get priority course for an extra 30%. Yeah. Holy shit. That's hot. Those are the ring interconnects. Okay. That's what I would guess. So this is what's putting these cores on. Basically, all communications through these cores will have to go through these. And this looks like a ring interconnect here. Even though this is not a core, this is the integrated memory controller, you can see that I think these are similar, right? And I think that would make sense. And that's why they look the same on all the cores, and that's why the memory controllers also have something that looks basically identical. Um, you have, like, the little groups up here. You have the group here. This seems to just be blasted out with noise. Or that's dense with data, but it might just be blasted out with noise. I'm not sure. Um, I guess they wouldn't etch anything they don't use. So these areas, I guess, are unetched silicon, I would imagine. These, like, greener areas where there's not... Basically, if it doesn't look like fucking entropy... Um, so I would hazard that this is where they're... Physically, this is connecting to this. Like, these are how they communicate. Would that make sense? I would expect that the ring connector would be this used on the IMC. Like, the IMC has a ring connector. That's how it basically communicates with other cores, and they didn't redo that logic. It's not like the IMC has a different connector from the cores. They didn't make a special purposed one, because it's doing the same shit. So... Fuzzy places are massive silicon that is layered in a unique way. Oh, interesting. I see. So. Interestingly. Hmm. If you have the, if you look at the PCI controller, it also has that up top. These? Yeah. Oh. Wow, look at this. These are some massive features. Huh. Yeah, like I see one here, one here, one here, one here. And then four more here. Four more here. So, 4, 8, 12. I expect there's like 12 linkages with some shit, maybe. Would that maybe be fair? So, there's this diagram, which is wrong. Oh, yeah. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I wonder if these UPIs or these... Uh, well... Two of those, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So 20 of these arrows. But those might just be like a UPI and a PCI unit. Interesting. The black and yellow is register and cache banks. Okay. Yep. That makes sense. Those are just SRAM cells, I'm guessing. And they kind of put them in random places. I would imagine we probably... Yeah. Huh. Okay. So... I wonder... Oh, you know what I think this is? Is this AVX? 
No, no, AVX5 Total will be somewhere else. I think. That stuff's interesting there. Nice factory of base. They're placed according to usage. Interesting. So I'd imagine that these are the GPRs. <laughs> like, these are the GPRs. This looks like ROM to me. I don't know why, but this looks like ROM to me. Like this area. Maybe registers. I wonder if these are registers and maybe these are vector registers. Well, there's more vector registers, to be honest. So weird ter Terraria mod, but we're not going to judge. Yeah, what's some... Um... There's a zoomed image of a single core on there? I don't see one. Um, back to Elm. Oh. Yeah. I see it. Got it. Saving. So here's the core. It's a it's a smaller image. Oh, yeah. Wowie. Wowie. Do you think that's just something on top of it? Or do you think that's one of the... Oh, wait. Why did that go to the other image? Shit. I guess it's loading both images in the album. Lo uh, love Fritz's IR images. Yeah, these are hot as fuck. I'm guessing this would not be a defect. This is him fucking it up. I don't think there would be a defect like this on the wafer. I mean, they could disable this core, but I would imagine a defect would never be that large. They're dust grains. That's fair. Yeah. Oh my god, these are ridiculous shots. Is this false color? Infrared? Those are hot, dude. That's hot as fuck. So, I would be curious then. I would be curious. So, we have, like, one that's really close. If we go by distance from these, we have, like... I mean, once they get on the ring, it's going to be nearly instant. Um, how are these rings connected? One, two, three, four. Oh! One, two, three, four. So each thing has four links. And it looks like there's an up and a down. So there's a, there's like a, there's a path in each direction. So bi-directional on each, and they're probably treated as separate channels. Some of the areas on the chip literally look like noise. Interesting. Whoa. So do these cores have to go up? Like, does this core, to get to the memory controller, this core has to go, like, down and left? Whereas these can go direct. So there's one, two, three, four cores that have a direct route. Five. One, two, three, four, five that have a direct route. Interesting. Two, three, four. Uh, one, two, three. Mm. We definitely have three that are faster than others. Like, 
We have three that are kind of significantly faster than others. I would imagine once you get on the bus, it's pretty fast. Well, are we measuring speed of light here? I don't know. So the difference between this, this is, uh, this is a hundred. Yeah, that's, that's 199. And then this one is 187, 12 cycles. Which is 12 divided by 2.3 E9. Um. Oh. Uh, so this is about 5.2 nanoseconds. Um. Yeah, so the difference between, like, these two is 5.21 nanoseconds. Um. <laughs> His Rocket Lake photos are set. Yeah, these are insane. Shout out. Holy shit. Um. How do we do this? There's 24 bars here? Yes. There's 24 bars. I'm a, I would imagine that Intel does binning, right? Um, so... Um, <laughs> um. binning is basically they 100% bin stuff for QA so I I have 28 core processors in here but only 24 cores are active. And I doubt that they picked like the middle four or something. That would maybe make sense. But what I would imagine more is that the four worst performing cores got disabled and they're effectively random. I would hazard that this pattern is different depending on my core, right? So if I, I don't know how to reset my zoom. Uh, yeah, I have no idea how to reset my zoom. I would imagine that the pattern would be different on each computer or on each core. So like here's, a, here's another physical processor and this one, a lot of things are closer, which is interesting. Well, honestly, there's probably too much noise to look at the measurements. There's probably too much noise looking at the measurements um, when we're going through the uh, QPI link to access another processor's memory, right? Um, so, let's see here. Um, what's the speed of light? 2.998. Yep, that's divided by 5.21 nanoseconds or times 5.21 nanoseconds. Okay, so light could go 1.5 meters, so it's not a speed of light thing at all. Not that being said, things don't propagate at the speed of light. They have to go way, yeah. Um, 
so I actually don't know what the propagation would look like. I wonder if these rings... I wonder if you get if you get on a ring, does your data have to be like received here and then sent back and then received and sent like or can it get put on the line here and these cores ignore it because it addresses the memory controller? I would imagine they could do that very cheaply where they would just have like a destination and they just wouldn't it probably has to um I bet, my guess, would be that cores are responsible for observing every message because cores have to be responsible for uh, making a message traverse, right? Like, if you want to go from this core to the memory controller, you will have to go up or down, but down, let's imagine it's, I don't know which route they would pick, but I would imagine you go down and then you go left. And to do that, this core, this core's ring, actually has to be responsible for that. Like, this core's ring has to basically take that message off the vertical ring and put it onto the horizontal ring. And it looks like there's two rings, so the rings look like they're unidirectional. Um, and that could just be like, this is addressed in like a certain way, and it just knows like, once it gets to five, then it takes it off and then pass it along. But I would guess that these things would maybe have to buffer and pass it through. I'm not 100% sure. Um, hmm. So, um, where do we put our graph? Do we close it? Do we close our graph? Yeah. So... Um, I would expect that, let's say, let's say the cost of traversing the ring is effectively free. So what matters is when you're basically routed. And I would imagine that you would go bink, bink. So uh, what are the different paths? There's the direct path. So there's like one. And then there's like an L, which would be maybe 2x that. And that would be the most complex routing, would be a 1 and a 2. So I'd expect to see two clusterings here, and we don't really see that. And Antec has an article about the ring bus. Is that like Skylake Plus? Um... Makes a mesh. 2017 Broadwell. Skylake X. Okay. Um. Whoa. That's on the E4. And then an SPR, a router. Yeah. So there is an NI, a network interface, and then a router. Okay. So once the message leaves your core, you're only paying the router cost, which would make sense, right? Like you would, well, I don't know if that's actually what they're using. Um... Wow, they have like really, really, really detailed information here. Um, wow, so they've been using 6466 for a while. Yep, and then they have the two here, and you can see those again. Obviously, they're placed like that. Favored core. That's turbo boost stuff. I don't think that matters. I think we're off it. Um, huh, core-to-core -core communication. Uh, 
Uh, three die program on those enterprise chips. Blah, 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 blah. Um. Superset model is shown on the right. Cascade Lake base servers use make use of Intel's mesh interconnect. In this configuration, the cores, caches, and the memory controllers are organized into rows and columns, each with a with dedicated connections going through the rows and columns. Um, each with dedicated connections going through the rows and columns, allowing for the shortest path between any tile, reducing latency and improving the bandwidth. These processors are offered from four cores up to 28 cores with eight to 56 threads. Okay. So. Interesting. Routing computation, switch allocation. Wiki chip has a thing. Fuck yeah, they do. Yeah, Xeon Phi used an interesting topology, and that was really fun to play with. General floor plan. IO peripherals, core tiles, IMC tiles. Where it's always down to. Tiles are replicated in the X and Y axis as many times as desired. Um, in theory, any type of IP block can be, can serve as a tile. Yep. Each tile is, so a CMS is a, uh, converged or common mesh stop. A mesh stop station facilitating the, uh, interface between a tile and a fabric. Okay. The mesh itself contains a two-dimensional array of half rings. Each vertical common form a bi-directional half ring. Similarly, each horizontal row is a bi- uh, Yep. Yep, start, boom. Uh, packet follows a very simple routing algorithm. Packets are first routed vertically, then they're routed horizontally. A packet originates in a tile uh, from the cha um, or some IO uh, peripheral. It then enters the fabri fabric at its CMS. The packet is then routed along the vertical half ring, either north or south, always taking the shortest path. Once the packet reaches the destination row, it will be taken off the vertical half ring and placed onto the horizontal half ring, where it will continue to the destination tile. Once the packet reaches the destination tile, the in it'll interface. Once it reaches the destination, it'll interface back with the tile via mesh stop. Interesting. Um, consider this. Packet will go from the tile labeled start and the IMC to the IMC. It'll go up on the mesh, over to the side, and routing occurs. Will then be routed through the packet will then be routed through three stops going north. The packet will be taken off the ring and placed onto the other ring. And to be able to take things off the ring. They have to be able to buffer here. So there's going to be basically some sort of um, cost between these. So basically, it's like number of nodes that you go through. So I would imagine that routing has a cost that's pretty expensive. And then also just passing it or keeping it on the ring. Because if it can take it off the ring, then that means that each node must basically pass it on like a ring buffer by nature is you are connected to your to your neighbors and while it doesn't have to necessarily reroute i think it still has to like place it back onto the thing because you wouldn't be able to inspect something and let it fly by you if you also need the ability to stop it right you can't you can't observe something in transit and then make the decision after it's flown by to stop it, which means that all packets have to stop temporarily. And then there's probably a very, very fast path where it passes it on because it's like, this is not destined for my row or column. And you immediately pass it on. But it has to at least basically stop the bus, right? Does that mean that horizontal connections in any row, except for the second, 
aren't used? Um, does that mean that any horizontal connections in any row except the second aren't used? No. Oh, yeah, for memory requests. Yes, for memory requests, yes. And we probably could measure that by hammering memory on one of these middle fours, and we might see, like, a, an expensive... Um, might see a pretty expensive thing there. Interesting. So, obviously, Knight's Landing. Knight's Landing actually used the mesh interconnect, so I'm actually very familiar with this. I assume that this wouldn't have a mesh interconnect, because I historically have been used to Knight's Landing, and Knight's Landing was the first processor that experimented with this. Um, interesting. Two of the tiles are IO. The additional are IMC. Yep. That was Knight's Landing, and then this is Skylake, and that's exactly what we see. We see the one, two, three, four, five, six up at the, up at the top. And it, it, it's plain as day in the die shots, right? You have the one, two, three, four, five, six up top, you have the memory controller one down. The, the, like, it's very obvious. This is exactly how it works. Um, beautiful. Okay, so we physically understand everything about... There's nothing up in the air anymore about physically how this processor is laid out and how packets get routed. So I would suspect that the cost of being passed forward on the ring buffer is basically zero. And so... Um, Basically, we probably could categorize this with, with a formula, and that formula would roughly be in the, um, there's going to be like a, a, a big cost, which is routing, which is times one or two, plus small, which would be like forwarding or like just pa pass through, times... Um, this would be, like, number of cores that you pass through, I guess. And this is, like, visited cores. Which is basically vertical times horizontal, right? And we know that it always takes the shortest route, so we don't have to think about it going up and around or doing anything like that. Um... Interesting. So. The problem here is we have no idea what cores are disabled. At all. And this is a situation where I think I care mostly about minimums. So let's take a look at what, what these minimums look like. We're up to like 220. So anything in the 200s, so 186, obviously that stuff is done. And then uh, this stuff is also done. Oops. So we should have, yep, we have 24 things here. We have 24 that hit this super low latency area. Um, and I would suspect what would happen here is the minimums are honestly what I think... I was going to say the minimums are what matters more here, but god damn, these are close. If you look at minimums, there should be three groups. One with three with lowest, six min, the rest are higher. Uh, what, would, what would be your view on basically that... Uh, this is actually a simplified layout of of ours, so we can just we can look at it here. Um, the die shot is great, don't get me wrong, but it also is a little bit more confusing because uh, there's just more noise. So, um, uh, how many things can get here directly? One. Are these different rings? Do these have to traverse the ring? And I think so. I think they do. So there's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight cores. 
best case scenario, eight cores that can, like, access that with one ring traversal? Because I'd imagine that these will have to do a jump. The other picture showed two separate paths. Okay. Yeah, and this is explicitly arrowing here. Okay. We'll actually use this photo because this photo is totally fine. This is literally the, the same layout we have in our chip. Um, so. It's interesting. Hmm. Because I'd expect there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight cores. So these four and these four theoretically should be able to access this without a route. So I would expect between eight and four. And the reason it's eight and four is we don't know what four cores are disabled. Um, okay, so let's do, um, well, these, these have to hit memory. I agree. One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five, six. So I would say there's like a cluster here, a cluster here, and then a final cluster. And how tight would our margins be on that? So we have like a, uh, a 203 threshold, and then we have nothing from 203 to 199. And what is our biggest gap like here? Like there to there? That's also about a three. So it's semi hard to cluster those, but that's one, two, three, four, five, six. So, yeah. And what would make sense with that? Hmm. One, two, three, four, five, six. How would that work? <laughs> um, one, two. Six need two jumps? Two need one? I mean, everything should need one or two jumps, right? Maybe they're just really far? Could the horizontal four be faster for some reason? Uh, actually, wait. We know it goes vertical first. Oh, yeah. It goes vertical first. Okay, so there are six here. And the rows are in six. It's possible that that could be like the closest row, but there's two rows sandwiched between the IMCs. So the theoretically, there could be two that are close. Let's try, let's try sorting these. There are eight directly connected to controllers vertically. The, no, there's only, one con, there's only one controller. All the memory is going through one controller. Um, how the fuck do I sort these? Um, how would I sort by, like, a different row? Uh, 
Um, sort via a key. Key def gives the location and type. Start and stop position. You can give it characters. Wait, how the fuck does that work? F is field number, and C is a character position in the field. Both, both are origin one, and the stop is the line's end. Sort N, help. Um, key is one. Key is two. Key is three. Yeah, I think that literally just works. Key equals. Holy shit. Nice. Um, okay. So this is the sorted version of the data. Can you please say why you used GNU plot? Matt Plotlib looks more preferable because I don't want to write Python every time I plot shit. And I think GNU plot gives better pixel perfect stuff with less aliasing and bloat and, and shitty blurriness on edges. I think it gives a little bit more direct data. Um, I'm trying to learn Ross and I like security. Any project ideas? Oh shit, I don't know. Uh, Uh, um, Rust and security. Uh, write, a fu write a fuzzer. I'm just going to say that because it's easy. Just write a fuzzer. Okay. So. So we have one that's close. So what do you think would be the closest? Literally this, the one that's kissing it? And then there's two? Maybe these two? And then there's four? Uh, maybe this one and this one? Or really anything that's two... Well, there's a lot of things that are two away. Maybe things that are two away directly. And yes, there would only be two that are two away directly. Um, one, two hops the horizontal. And one, two hops the, hor the vertical. So one... One, two... But there's four. We're looking for four things. One, two. So, okay. How many of these cores need routing? Three could be, it could be three uh, horizontal along IMC and one disabled. Yeah. And these are distances. That would, that would allude to this one being disabled. Core number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This core. I bet they prefer disabling cores further to the furthest from the controllers. I don't think they make any decisions based on the core location. I think they disable 100% based on testing defects, clock rates, perf like the basically the quality of the silicon and the RNG of the core. 20 need hops. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight wouldn't need hops. 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight are kind of fast here. We could have one disabled in those eight. And then these are things that need hops. Because it, it seems like there is a threshold. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, so there's nine things here. So it's either, I think more likely things are going to happen in Powers of Two. So there's like eight here. And then there's like this next territory. So what would be slower than a direct? Like a one hop? Like a, like a super close hop? Like a bink bink? I mean, there'd be a lot. I would expect a lot would be there. One hop, but super short. And if we look silicon wise, like that, there would be like one, two. It could just be literally those two. Right? Um, so that's, and then, but I wouldn't expect it to be that much. Well, we have two that are really slow. You know what? Are these going up kind of in pairs? Kind of in pairs? It might be a little bit reachy. Damn it. I didn't. Whoops. I ruined. I ruined it. There are two that are expensive. Hmm. I think there is meaning to this. I mean, there's there's kind of pairs of twos here. We sorted by min. Let's sort by um, average. And if we sort by average, These two, there's like a pair of two, a pair of two, maybe a disabled core here, a bunch that are the same. Would that make sense though? Would it make sense? Are there, I would imagine that there are a lot with the exact same length, right? Exactly eight that are the same. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yes. And then we kind of get these small bumps. So like maybe some cores are disabled here. Maybe here. Exactly eight that are the same. Hmm. Obviously, if we hammered one of these cores and made it really busy with, like, L2 accesses, we'd probably be able to see which cores get penalized. Uh, because we would just... We could increase the ring traffic, like, core-to-core -core IPC. Like, L2 basically doing... If we were to do um, L2 accessing atomics, would maybe be a, a decent example... The CMS are adjacent, yeah. Hmm. I don't think the distance on the bus matters. Like, like theoretically looking at this graph, like, there's two right next to each other here, but this one's far away. So even though these are one hop, these are closer, but I just... I don't think that matters. I don't think propagation or anything matters here. And I doubt that the interconnect 
is like slow along that path. I wouldn't think. I would imagine that... Yeah, does that make sense? Hmm. It would be a fun thing to do, but I, I do need to like focus more eyes on the prize. And the eyes on the prize in this case is uh, literally just collecting the basics, the, the NUMA, the NUMA stuff. Um, interestingly, Memory reads didn't seem to pay uh, a NUMA penalty, or... Like, I would kind of expect, and I'm just gonna plot the... Uh, I'm gonna plot the averages. I'll apply with lines. So... Uh, and now we'll go to 1440 by 900. Interestingly, there doesn't really seem to be like one area is more expensive than the other for reads. So we're going to call this uh, uh, R data and R data 2. Okay, and then we're going to change this from a read volatile to a write volatile. And we should build our kernel. There we go. So now these are right. So let's just update these while data collects T. Uh, read data number one. T read data number two. Okay, and then we have write data. And we have write data two, write data one, write data two. And we're just looking at two data sets to see if there's patterns. That's the only reason we're doing this. Um, as we're the only reason we're doing two of the two of the collections, B C P. And then we'll just uh, do a soft reboot here. Soft reboot's fine in this case. I think writes are going to have way more noise. I don't think the graphs are going to line up for writes. And I don't know why. But I'm scared. And get rid of the trailing comma. Uh... Data was read data, and data two is read data two. Okay, so clearly we see a difference between reads and writes, um, but it does look like the data is consistent between these two. Yeah, those lines just overlap. But they don't at the end. We didn't copy the wrong data. They don't overlap at the end. Same with these, there is a difference at the end. So it's not, it's, these are actually plotting something. So, um, we can add a uh, grid and axes and stuff for the new people who join. Set grid, set ax, uh, uh, x label is, um, core ID, set y label is, um, this is uh, memory access latency in cycles. And then we can set title memory uh, latency from core to NUMA node number zero on a quad socket Intel 6252N at 2.3 gigahertz okay all right so um oh yeah to do an at i think we need uh two back 
ticks. Yeah. Um, okay. Is there a way to shift them down? Yeah, we could do that. We could just figure out the difference between these on average. Uh, let's just say that this is, I don't know. What's the, there is a pattern, it seems. Um, let's go to, uh, 458, 458 minus 188, mm, something in that territory, 270, shift it by 270, um, okay, I think I can do variables like this. Can't remember, 100%. All right. Uh, we could slide it a bit more, maybe like another 30. There we go. They look semi-overlap now. Um. Okay. And then let's just do these two lines. So we're just looking at two of the graphs. Interestingly, these are cheaper than this one. So, interesting. Uh, this is actually NUMA node number. Four. Which will be on this core. Interestingly, there is a step. There's like this, and then this is really, exp really expensive. So, node zero accessing this is further from this, which is interesting because they go to the QPI link and the QPI link has a direct connection between the two. It is NUMA node four. You are right. Okay. Um, and then if we look in here, we can see if there's any general, maybe amplified things. So, okay, the tallest point, the local minimum here is the same local minimum. Maximum, it goes down, it kinks up. There's then a massive spike. It then goes down, which it does here. It goes down here. Both go up here. Both go up to this point. Both go up to this point. Both go down to this point, which is just in line. It's very, there is a point here. Um... There's a, like, a GNU plot line style. There's, like, a line point, I think. Lines point, LP. Is it LP? Yes. It'll be a little easier to see, in my, in my opinion. As a data analysis expert. Um... So, yep, there you can see that there is a point there. It's just right in the same slope-ish. Pit here, then they go up. Okay, here we have a discrepancy. We have one going down when it's going up. Um, then two points here. And then we have an up where that's kind of flat. A down where that's down. Uh, that goes up again when that goes down. And then two ups again. So, it, it's... There's definitely something there. Let's switch to write data one. Okay, so the write data is the same, right? The write data is the same. We don't have to switch between the graphs. It's the, it's the same fucking thing on both. So, um, I don't know. There's, they definitely share kind of the same high points and low points. With the exception of, like, this is kind of the biggest outlier. This is kind of a big outlier. This is way more negative, I guess. Um, but they seem to have a similar-ish shape, right? Which would make sense. Um, and then reads are also just overlapped. Reads are just exact between the two sets. The writes... There's a slight different between, difference between the right sets, but they're almost a perfect overlap as well, right? So, um, I don't know. I don't know. 
Interesting. Interesting. I'm surprised that there's... Didn't we measure maybe a difference between... Okay, let's do this. Um, why you know DEFCON this year? Because I, I, I've been traveling too much. Sick of fucking traveling. Um... Okay. So... I think what I'm gonna do is, uh... I'm gonna put in, uh, Numenode number... We're gonna go to number five. Okay? And this is gonna be right data. We should build our kernel. So now we're going to Numa node number five, which should be uh, just another wing of the same package. Basically, we're gonna see if sub Numa clustering has a, has a large effect here or any effect. So these are writes. And we're gonna yoink BC. We're going to uh, split. Uh, we'll say write data five. And then we'll run this for reads. We'll build our code this time. Okay, and then uh, from node four comma five, number four, number five, and then we'll have five, five, four, five, right slide is zero. Okay, be this, this, yoink, bc, over to here. Uh, this is our data five. Okay. Okay. So, um, so we would expect that, hmm, this is interesting. To be kind of mirrored, that's what I would kind of expect. But it looks like the blue line's almost always on top. Which is strange. We also don't necessarily know what our nodes are. Let's see if our nodes are... Let's see if our nodes are in a sequence. Because we're assuming they kind of are. Kernel source, BSP, ACPI. Uh, print the nodes, detected CPUs. Um... Get node ID from an APIC ID. Um, I really wish I could call that function. Core ID to APIC ID. Um, and it APs. We'll just dump it here. Because we just can. For APIC ID in 0 to... 100. We know that all of them fit in there. Print ln apic id to node This will be a 3 to node uh, just 1's fine here. So we can just have that and then we'll call get node id for the apic id. Okay. One oh two. <sighs> Unclosed, yeah. Um, 
Um, and we'll, uh, if let some node ID is get node ID, a pick ID, uh, and we do this. Yeah, maybe we have some cores not going to that node, which would be interesting if there's not a 50-50 split on all the cores, uh, which would be possible if we, did we build our kernel? Oh, we call a knit many times. We want uh, launch APs. Or not launch AP, but... Um, yeah, let's just do it at the end of a knit. That's fine. Yep, that kernel is going to get kicked out. Now that that kernel is gone, we're only going to get the print there. Bam. Okay. So, um, oh, okay. So that was a bad assumption because these do not follow a pattern. All right. Okay. So it's interesting. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. So I wonder if any of these cores have um, things that are not clustered evenly. Missed you at the woo woo party? Escape and Day Thief and J Duck and say greets and come next year? Yeah. Yeah, I should. Holy shit. That does sound fun. Oh, these strawberries are good. They're a little mushy. They're a little, they're a little, uh, a little too ripe. Mmm. Mmm. Okay. How the fuck am I going to get this information? Um. Hmm. Can I get this with CPU ID? Let's see. While I eat my delicious strawberries. Let's see what CPU ID can do for me today.
There's a couple instructions on XD6. Um, cash and TLB info. Maybe it would show up there. Cash type fields. Um, cash level. Sets and ways. God, strawberries are fucking good. I'm sad I missed DEF CON. Although a lot of people got COVID, so I'm not sad about that. Um... Interrupt thresholds. Bitmap of hardware feedback capabilities. I wonder if cores even know where they are. That would have to be etched in. Strawberries, I think, have the highest upside but also some of the lowest downside as a fruit. Topology. Here we go. Here we go. See APID 6 register, 28 bitmap of the enabled, what? The fuck is this? Um, is this people like reversing the shit out? Wow, they have real hardware. Oh yeah, they're literally trying it. Hmm. Um, logical process are going to execute CPU ID to retrieve both its X APIC ID and X2 APIC ID and information for how many bits were used to indicate the package. Wait, indicate the package at physical core and thread count. The 8 bit ID is constructed and deconstructed as shown in table 5. Um, Yep. Yep. We do observe that here. Mm. Core, physical cores per package. And that makes sense. Regular core ID patterns. Logical mappings by a squashing of the rings. Interesting. 28 core in those. They have four groups of seven eight of contiguous groups for socket zero. I'm going to find the logical core ID as the logical processor number divided by two. Mm hmm. Is this talking about, like, the actual ID on the ring? Um... 
Um, a pick numbering on that. Uh, I'm reading this on another screen. I don't know why. But it's it's kind of interesting. I'm, I don't... Skipped o skipping over the disabled core. Numbering was linear with position on the ring. Testing was not comprehensive. Okay. So, for the processors with uniform sets of XAPIC IDs, which I think was basically everything, except for Knight's Landing, but that's a weird, that's a weird fucking thing. So, yep. Uniform, 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 uniform. These are Platinum 8280s. I think these are uh, my gen, aren't they? Their naming scheme is ass. Yep, that's Cascade Lake. So they found Uniform. Uh, they found Uniform information. Intel lists the major Intel-based supercomputing. Oh, they ran this on the supercompute clusters. So, this is literally, um, they ran it on a fuck ton. Oh, that's so cool. I thought this is like they ran it on, like, random hardware they had in their lab. No, they, like, they, like, census the hardware. <clears throat> okay. Unusual was seeing in Hikari. Um, interesting. About the core ID. Core ID is a unique identifier provided by the hardware firmware for each logical processor. These identifiers are the targets associated with the APIC functionality of the hardware, so the operating system must track these uh, to properly target interrupts. The current Intel processors TAC, and that makes sense. The APIC ID actually has to be like a physical addressing of a core. Um... um Okay. In XAPIC mode, the hardware and firmware produce an 8-bit XAPIC ID for the logical processor. Um, this mode supports addressing of 256, which is sufficient for all tax systems except the Xeon Phi's, the 8-bit uh, blah blah blah. It packs together the physical pack, the co package, physical core, and thread context. In X2 APIC mode, the hardware and firmware produce a 32-bit thing. Uh, in either mode, they can execute CPU ID to get it. Yep. So there's a uh, global XAPIC ID and then the local uh, ID. Yep. Um, and this, this is documented. This is not something they reversed out. This is literally documented here. Um, the value of core ID in that and that is the local XAPIC ID. Um, this value is used by the OpenMP stuff. Okay. That's core ID in topology, not in CPU ID. CPU ID is like a unique uh, core identifier that's not APIC based. Um, common uniform core ID. Path. For almost all things except for the Xeon Phi, that local X APIC core ID numbering depends on the number, number of physical cores in each package. Oh, okay. The standard core ID patterns hold for systems um, from any of our vendors uh, and, the pro and for processor generations from Sandy Bridge through Cascade Lake Xeon. The patterns are identical on systems with interleaved or block distributed logical processor numbering. The patterns are not affected by the presence of hyperthreading, um, except that the values are repeated for the second thread context. Uh, in each core with the thread ID bit set to one. Yeah, so this is just looking at the core number, uh, which is this core ID, and masking off the thread ID, right? Um, note that the core ID sequence contains skips, even on processors with all cores active, such as the 28 core 8280. Um, for the Xeon scale scalable processors, the cap id 6 register provides a 28-bit map of the enabled and disabled L3 slices. 
contains skips. Um, review of this register in more than 424 core processors of the Stampede 2 uh, Skylake uh, partitions, Skylake X partitions, showed that identical X Apex sequence IDs were used across 55 different patterns of disabled cores. Okay. Oh, cool. So they had like a good, like, not census, but they had a good amount of, of unique disabled patterns. Core ID sequences were also seen to be independent of disabled cores uh, and that. For these processor counts, the numbering scheme is clearly dividing the core numbers into clumps of up to eight contiguous core numbers starting in multiple of eight boundaries. These clumps are of uniform size for more, most core counts, i.e. every value of the table except for 18. One way to interpret this numbering scheme is that a, is a, a recursive bisection to create groups of no more than eight cores. I see. So sometimes there will be skips. So like a 24, there will be two blanks there, but you don't necessarily know. Yeah, they didn't compress them all to the front. Oh. Comparing that with that. Uh, whether this is required or not, this is observed in all mainstream Xeon processors that the lower half of the local X APIC core IDs were located in the left half of the die, and the upper half were located on the right half. I don't think we observe that. Wait. Um. Eight. Is that delineation on the eight? Physical cores. Used as a function of physical cores. I guess, does that line up with what we see then? Where the fuck is it? Here it is. And then on eight, and then we have a skip to 18. But n we have no skip in the 18 range and different nodes. So I am observing differently than that, I think, unless I'm misreading what they're saying. Um, core package thread. Observed is always monotonic. Zero maps to local APIC ID. Logical one maps to that. Blah, blah, blah. Um, APIC values of zero to six, eight to 14. That's on a 28 core, 0 to 6, 8 to 14, 16 to 22, 24 to 30. Uh, for socket 0, the logical processors are that. So I can define a logical core ID. Uh, as the logical processor number divided by 2. A local logical core ID. The mapping of the first 14 core IDs are shown in this. Okay. Smashes the squashing of the rings. Uh, mapping might not represent an obvious pattern, but with a bit of spatial arrangement, it becomes clear that the interleaving matches the pattern when squashing a set of rings into a flat interleaved topology. Um, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yup. And I 10, 11. Okay. Now, 
Note that this permutation operator only applies within groups of contiguous uh, core IDs. So it is consistent with the observation in six that the lower half of the values are expressed with cores on the left half. And okay, so I think I read it wrong. So I think it will always, for each eight, there will be lows and uh a ring of lows and high, although this is kind of weird because we go, well, 18 has 0, 0, 1, 1, 1. So a different number in both. So how would we... But we do observe that. We do observe these clusters, right? There's cluster number one. Here's cluster number two. So we see clusters. Hmm. Logical processor, uh, 06152. Huh. Interesting. Comparing the bit field suggests that might be some reason for some of the properties, the mapping. It was observed in all mainstream Xeon processors that the lower half of the local XAPIC core IDs were located in the left half of the die and the upper half was on the right half. Details will be presented on later reports. Oh, interesting. So they must have done something to test that. Um, recursive bisection of groups of no more than eight cores. Correct. And we are seeing that. We are seeing differing groups of eight. Uh, so that's an eight cluster. Here's another eight cluster. Uh, here's another eight cluster. Um... Here's another eight cluster. Or, oh, I'm reading these as hex. I'm being an idiot. That, and then this to 16. There's another cluster. Then we have a cluster here. Uh, six, wait, where's 16? Where's 16? This would imply that there's always a 16 and a 24. And we're not seeing a 16. Right? Does this not imply that there would always be a 16? And we're not seeing a 16. Um... Does that mean 16 is disabled? No, because these are like compressed into groups of eight. So, an eight, and then we don't have a 16. Oh, because we have to divide these by two. We have to divide these by two. I see. Makes sense. All right. We're dividing it down to get rid of the bottom bit, and the bottom bit is used to encode whether or not it's a thread, a hyper thread. So in this case, we run that. We can halt this. We don't need to run it. Um... There we go. So now we have, well, now we don't have an eight. We do have a 16, but we don't have an eight. We have a 24, we have a 32. Oh, 32 is the next package. So 
So this is everything on the first package. We have zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. Then we have a gap of two. We start at nine. We then have a gap from 13 to 16, which is on an eight boundary. Then we have a gap from 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. We have a gap to 24. Interesting. Interesting. So I don't know 100%. Um. Hmm. Okay, that's interesting. Anyway, I'm gonna line it up with the pneumonodes. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just gonna line it up with the pneumonodes. Um, I don't know if I can get that. Oh, there was the uh the mention of the cap ID six. Which I do not know where that would be. Never heard of it. Oh, is there a follow up? Die locations, of course, and L3 sli slices. Once, okay. Um, there's no need to know the location of the units, but there are many performance analysis that do require it. And it's extremely, uh, useful to be able to, uh, yeah. They use all, uh, all 28 tiles are fully enabled. So is there, there is no, there are no disabled units. Oh, interesting. Zero, one, two, three. Oh, perfect. Yep. So this is numbered in this way. Which is kind of fun. Um, interesting. Left, uh, in each socket, they're numbered from top to bottom, left to right, skipping over the memory control. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 19, 11, 12, 13. Yep. The pattern of logical processor numbers will vary depending on whether the numbers alternate between the sockets even in zero, odd in one, or are block distributed, first half in zero, second half in one. For the TAC uh, Frontera system, all of the nodes are configured with the logical processors alternating between sockets. So all even numbered logical processors are in socket zero and all odd numbered logical processors are in socket one. For this configuration, the locations of logical process of logical socket zero are this. In socket one, the layout is the same. What the fuck? What the fuck is this? Logical processor number. I'm guessing that's referring to APIC IDs, right? So what's this? Why are they in like random order? Twenty-four of the tiles are freely enabled, and the four remainings are disabled, and have disabled CHA, SFs, and LLCs. For these, administrative priv privileges are required to read the configuration registers that allow one to determine the locations of the units and the logical processors. There are approximately 120 patterns across the 3,472 Platinums. Uh, the pattern of disabled cores generally has negligible impact on performance, but one needs to know the locations to make sense of the traffic on the 2D mesh. Yes. Fortunately, one piece of information is known, uh, or... Fortunately, only one piece of information is needed on these systems, the CAP ID6 register, which 
uh, tells which cha locations on the die are enabled. Um, and these systems have a fixed mapping of logical processor numbers to co-located cha numbers. So it would not be hard to make this information available to interested users. So wait, did they just... So these are the cha numbers. And did Intel like randomize this? And I think that might be what happened. I think... The, basically, the CHA locations are looked up by using the CAP ID 6 register. So, we read the CAP ID 6 register. We then can read the bits, because it's a 28-bit register. So, those bits index what's in a... What Physical cores are enabled. And then from that, I can use this as a lookup table because it seems that they might have maybe done it for obfuscation reasons or randomization reasons or something. I don't really see a pattern here, but I think they said that all of them have this same layout. All of them do. Okay. Um, for, um, fortunately, only one piece of information is needed on these systems. The, uh, the CAP ID 6 register tells us which child locations on the die are enabled, and these systems um, have a fixed mapping of logical processor numbers to co-located CHA numbers. So it wouldn't be hard to make this available. So basically, th they decoded their lookup table. And this must be... I mean, this looks random to me. 1, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 8. It, it looks random. And they might be doing that intentionally. One hundred and twenty patterns of disabled tiles, but all of them had the same mapping. Are the disabled ones the same locations on all sockets for a given? No, 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 no. Out of three thousand four hundred seventy-two processors, one hundred and twenty different patterns of disabled tiles existed. So it's random. This mapping is not random. So we can look up the cap ID register to know which tiles are enabled. We then can use a lookup in this table to determine which APIC ID we expect to get from that. That's cool. That's really cool. John McCaplin. Mc McKelpin. Oh, is this the dude who responds to, like, every fucking thing? It's like an older dude. He responds to every fucking thing on the Intel boards. Yes. He is. Okay, I know this dude. If, he, if you ask any question on the Intel boards, he'll be there. It's not even that he might be there. He will be there. Okay, so this dude's just big fucking nerd. All right. So, um, okay. So we need to figure out how to read cap ID six. The fuck is cap ID six? Guessing an MSR. Okay. Intel's documentation, this is him. Intel's documentation uh, refers to PCI and decimal where everyone else uses hexadecimal. Device 30 in decimal is 1E hex. So I looked up the devices um, with this number and defined function three. The cap ID six register is then available there. This is the correct value for the bitmap for an 8280 since all are enabled. 
So I need to look up a... Big fucking nerds, okay? Big fucking nerds. Um... Set PCI. Uh, so what do you give it? A uh, device. And then you give it a register. And then dot L. What does dot L mean? What the fuck does that mean? Uh, LSPCI, grep. So I want, uh... So I want to find this on my own system. Oh, is it is it a hard coded bus number? What what font do you use? I don't know. Um performance counters. Look up the PCI did for the unit. So I'm looking for grep PCU registers. LSPCI. Um. Um. Power monitoring? Mm, no. Okay, we need to be a little smarter about this. Been here. Uh, more information is here. This is the this is the new release. Yeah, this dude's a big nerd. Mapping to die locations. Oh, ho, ho, ho. fuck yeah. IOs and then the T's. LLC, CHA is caching and home agent responsible for generating. Um, yep. Oh, so that does the coherent stuff. Snoop filter. Huh. For processors with the same number of enabled cores and SHAs, uh, blah, 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 the mapping was found to be identical across nodes when the nodes were the same server model. Identical, uh, yep. The core to SHA numbers were not identical across server models. Different distributions of logical processors. Grouping them by column. Yep, so this is... It relates to me if one assumes the meanings of left and right are swapped in alternating columns, the results match the expected patterns. Uh, compensated for the left-right mirroring of the columns, uh, this causes the counts of locations to precisely match expectations in the methodology in five, blah, blah, blah. It is immediately evident that the CHA numbers follow a simple pattern, starting with zero in the upper left corner, incrementing down the column all the way till CHA in the lower right. Um, this pattern of numbering was seen on all systems with Xeon scalable processors, with modifications for disabled CHAs uh, see, uh, discussed below. Okay. Um... Unlike the pattern of cha numbering, 
the pattern of logical processor numbering is different for nodes with socket interleave logical processor distribution and block distributed numbering. Examination of the die photo of a 28 core scalable thing shows that the layout of the processor cores is a left right reverse alternating columns without special logic to detect and adjust for this mirroring. It's not surprising that this could cause the observed reversal of the meanings left and right. For that, in the initial study, so this is seven. This is what we want. Analysis with disabled tiles, which is what we, we have. Uh, for the 24 core 8160, the difficulty of the analysis was compounded by knowing neither the overall mesh layout nor the locations of disabled tiles. That's the problem we've had. Um, it was also not certain at the time how the mesh routing worked with disabled tiles or whether the performance counters were functional in CHAS with disabled LLCs. Perhaps the mo first important result was the recognition that the 24 CHAS associated with the active LLC slices are accessed via the MSRs for CHAS 0 through 23, while the remaining four inactive, the performance count, um, i.e. the performance counters were not responsive to writes um, from 24 to 27. Though the MSR accesses were not blocked. Oh. This means that there is an indirection layer in the hardware between the CHA number used by the MSRs and the physical CHAs on the chip. So the CHA numbers cannot, by themselves, directly indicate location. The patterns of active links described in section 4 were initially envisioned in the slightly more general context of a chip with four disabled cores and four disabled tiles, all in unknown locations. It was quickly recognized that the one-to-one -one mapping of core of CHAS, property set 2, holds on all of these processors. Since every core has a co-located CHA, it must also be true that the disabled cores and disabled CHAs are co-located, significantly simplifying the possible topologies that must be considered. It was also clear in the early analyses uh, that the distribution of up and down traffic uh, was consistent with the expected results uh, for chips with four disabled CHAs. Due to the Y first routing, traffic coming from the memory controllers only moves vertically in the first and last columns. A disabled CHA in either of those columns will result in a missing vertical link count for all cores that are in that row or on a row further away from the memory controller. Yeah. Okay. Um, interesting. Um... Xeon scalable processors have a hardware register called CAP ID6 in PCI configuration space that contains a 28 bit bitmap of the enabled LLC slices, documented in section 1.7.1 uh, of 3. The documentation refers only to the number of bits set in this register, not to the bit locations, but the fact that it is a bitmap, rather than simply an account of active CHAS, suggests investigating whether the bit locations may relate to a phys fixed physical locations on the die. The bus numbers uh, may vary from system to system, but on two uh, socket Xeon scalable processors at TAC, the values were obtained by using this command. On the Stampede system, um, the first command returns the cap ID 6 value from socket 0 and the second from socket 1. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, it's the same offset, but th this is querying two different physical sockets. Uh, the cap ID 6 values were collected from almost all, 94% of the processors in the Stampede 2 system, um, and 120 unique cap ID 6 bitmap patterns were found. All of the bitmap patterns have exactly 2 bits cleared in the upper 14 bits and exactly 2 bits cleared in the lower 14 bits, but otherwise show no obvious symmetries or patterns. A handful of nodes with different cap ID 6 values were chosen for manual analysis and comparison between disabled SHA locations based on mes mesh traffic measurements and cleared bit fields cap ID 6. Reviewing the results so that showed that the SHAs are numbered using a simple extension um, reviewing the results showed that the SHAs are numbered using a simple extension of the numbering for the fully configured chips, as illustrated in Figure 7. The SHAs are numbered consecutive, consecutively, starting at the upper left going down then right, but skipping over the disabled SHAs, as well as skipping over the IMCs. 
So this is the cha numbering in a 28, and this is the cha numbering with four disabled chas. Attempts to derive an algorithm for the core numbering based on physical position were unsuccessful. However, the mapping of core number to co-located cha number is the same in all nodes of the same vendor server model and same processor. So it suffices to use CAP ID 6 register to determine lo the locations of the active CHA numbers and then use the measure measured core to CHA mapping to map the locations of the numbered cores. The CAP ID 6 value of this was the most commonly observed pattern, accounting for approximately 23% of the processors. This results in the same CHA numbering on both Dell and Intel systems, but different mappings, blah, blah, blah. Um... Interesting. Core numbering in this. I see. When subnumer clustering is enabled, the CHAS cores and memory controllers on the left side. Um, yeah. For socket interleaved and then for block distributed, which is, I think, what we have. All right, in the left, those are in the right. Um, Chas associated with exact inactive LLC slices are inactive, but the corresponding mesh stop is functional. Oh! The corresponding mesh stop is functional, passing data through and switching from Y to X directions as needed. Oh, interesting. The MSR interface uh, maps P, blah, blah, blah. Okay. That's so fucking cool. That's, this is dank. This is some dank research. This would be fun to work on. Um, okay. Well, that's something fun to do another day. Not today. Uh, we're just going to get the node ID and sort them by node. <laughs> I hope I grow up enough to be a nerd of, uh, to record MSRs on hundreds of copies of the same processor. Yeah, it's pretty dank. It's pretty dank. In the grand scheme of dankness, it's pretty dank. All right. So, we are now, uh, we're just going to get that node ID. How am I going to get that? How am I going to get that? Uh, boot. Launch. Do I pass any information in? No. Else false. Um. Why am I not listening to music? Definitely Twitch chat's fault. Um. Okay, so um, we want to basically getting the physical IDs would be a pain. That'd probably take a couple hours. I don't have time for that right now. So we're just going to get the node information there, and then we'll make our own unique ID that will sort by node. Because right now we're not sorting by node, and that's why we have those weird peaks. Because we're literally not sorting our data correctly. We're so stupid. Um. I'm a girl. Blah, bottom. Okay. Um, so what we can do, and I think it's the easiest way, is a little gross. Kernel source BSP mod. Kernel source message. We're going to add a message. I have not worked with this in a long time. I cannot remember how this works. Um, so we're just going to do a uh, query node ID.
that's the actual message ID. And we're just going to make one of these, I think. Pubstruct message uh, or query node ID. Yep. Pub node E32. Or this is the um, APIC ID. APIC ID to query node ID for. And then I need to make a response. Yes. Okay. Uh, query uh, node ID resp. This is the node ID. Node ID or not zero if uh, uh, apic ID was not valid. Okay. Bink, bink. Okay. Uh, 42. Query node ID not covered. In mod. Okay. And then we have message 611. Here we go. Message server. Uh, message type ID is a uh, query node ID. Some message query node ID, IPC read, message win, message server, uh, owner server. Okay. It's apparently how you do that. Download rest. We want something simple. I think Alex pretty simple. So this is query node ID node. This will give a uh, option U32. We'll get the message window. We'll get a message. We have to manually do this shit. I guess so, okay. Uh, for query node ID. Query node ID, no, uh, this is the APIC ID. Uh, and this is And then this is just going to be uh if resp dot node id is not zero else none sum resp dot node id Fuck yeah Okay, and then we have to make a response thing, I guess. This isn't terrible. It's not great. It's not terrible. Um, uh, query node ID. Node ID. Is it that easy? An invitation, fuck you mean you need it. I don't need a reason. Uh, query node ID. APIC ID. Come on.
node id rasp message win <sighs> node id need it fuck you mean you rsvp i don't need a reason this fucking mean you need it It's not that easy, is it? If I don't typo. Oh, that's the one. Okay. An invitation, fuck you mean you need it, fuck you mean. I don't need a reason. Okay. Kernel source uh, thread local. Let's do this. Let's cache it. Oh, Jesus Christ, we could have just used notify online. Notify the BSP that we're up and running and get a unique core ID. God fucking damn it. I can't fucking believe it, dude. Literally at it the whole time. Well, I didn't have it, but I had a better place to put it. Lately. Okay. Um. Fuck, boy, Zach. It's me back again. 
It's a... Okay, so now we can just do this. You ready? Core this. A pick this. Node this. Cause no t-shirt off and burn I would be I have any Kernel source uh, BSP a uh, ACPI Print No spin Think that I'm a dumbass Wow Wow Wow. 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 Be after me, I'm over it. Yeah, you're so over, over. Okay, so I think we make a um, let location ID is equal to thread node ID shift by 16 or that with the APIC ID. I'll shift it by 32. Or uh, thread dot uh, APIC ID. On the tabletop. Oh, he's dead again. Oops. Okay, so we get the node ID. We shift it by 32. So the node will always determine the ID, and then the APIC ID is within that node. Okay. Yeah, it was so over, over. You know what? I could use the core ID at this point. We'll do a plus, and we're just going to multiply this by a million. Not cute. Only one can. There's potential in you. Okay. Then this is now going to be the uh, location ID. And then we'll just do 10 on this. Top bit or the top part. Let's just see. Fuck yeah. <laughs> so we have the core ID and then the node ID is up top. So when we actually sort these. Okay. You wish, you wish I miss you. Back the fuck up, I dismiss you. So I think I just have to sort these myself. Yep, and we have all 95 here. Um, how does this actually allocate them? Okay, so this will launch the first AP, and then these will launch the next one. So basically, launching an AP is sequential, and basically, they have to come online, and they've been assigned a unique ID. So the, uh, the core IDs in my OS are actually... Um, a compressed mapping of the APIC IDs. They are all sequential. They, they are linear with respect to the APIC IDs, which is really nice. Um, that makes sense because I only bring up one at a time and I will not bring up, I just keep bringing up the next core each time a core comes up. Um, 
Interesting. And that takes a core ID. That will look it up to figure out which core ID to bring up. Uh, and I don't know where I assign that. Oh, core online is fired at the end of thread locals. This kernel is such a great fucking design. Hi, how's it going? C++? No, this is, uh, this is Rust. Um... So, at the very end, it notifies online. And notify online... Oh, wait, core online. What's core online? Maybe they're not. Maybe they're not. Uh, unless that is notify online. Uh, message. That is a core online. So it sends a core online. And then we get that response. Uh, the response... Okay, so... Where do we actually allocate that fucking ID? We respond with message when core ID. Oh, core ID is... Sequential core ID of the core that messaged us. Oh, it was assigned it... Ah, it got assigned that core ID... When that lo okay. The core ID is implicit. Okay. Interesting. Interesting, interesting, interesting. So we send a... We know the core ID based on the message window. And we, when we launch an AP, message windows. Okay. Core ID. I'm trying to see if it's uh, with respect to the APIC ID. I still don't know now. Um, that would be when it comes up. That would be early init of a core. Initialize thread locals. BLS. What's fucking BLS? Param. That was passed in. Uh, bootloader structure. Okay. Um, I think we get that from the bootloader. Oh, it's going to be a sign. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Interesting. The bootloader is responsible for setting that up. Ah, okay, okay. Create a window for the maximum number of CPUs. And then we allocate that. So when we launch uh, non-BSPs, which is going to be, if it's BSP, if it's not, okay, here it is. Allocate a unique sequential core ID. We bring them up in order and we don't launch them until others start. So this is going to be allocated sequentially. So it's a compressed range. Nice. Okay. I like that. That's really good. Pretty straightforward. Nothing too crazy there. Everything's super easy here. 
everything makes sense. Nothing is confusing to us right now. Everything is very obvious. And now all that we're going to do is we're going to recollect our data. So we're going to do... Uh, we have four things of data to collect. Are you ready, everyone? We're going to alloc on node four. Okay. These are going to be reads on node four. Ready? Building. Building kernel. Kernel is built. Running. All right. So we're just running that. And this is going to be... Uh, rm star data star dot text okay so we're gonna make an r data four and an r data five r data four r data four okay so this is gonna be um uh, r data four dot text and we're just gonna copy over the results and we have to do b equals this literally gonna copy this bc paste this in and we did it. Okay, so that's done. Um, nice. Okay, that's done. Now we're gonna start the next data. We're gonna go to node five. So these are reads on node five. So this is our data node five. Uh, our data five dot text. Our data four dot text, and we can do uh, sort dash u. Sort you. Okay, so now these have been sorted. Mine, mine, mine. And how many? There should be 12. Whoa. 12? 11? Where is zero? Did we clip it? Did we... Oh, zero's not involved in the benchmark. Okay, nice. That makes sense. Woo! Be a bitch, better wear sunscreen. Enter BC. This is R data five. Sort you save. Now we're going to go back to four. And now we're going to switch from reads to writes. Building. Compiled, copied, reboot. Oh, fuck that. Okay. That's what we were doing. We're just finishing this up. We're collecting our data now. So goddamn easy. Never had a harder problem in my life or easier problem in my life. Yeah, that's the one. Okay, uh, switch the node to five, rebuild, and boot the kernel. Tell me this isn't the nicest kernel to work in. Oh, it's just art. Mine, 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 mine. mine. And there's the end of the data. BC. This isn't the nicest kernel. You're just wrong. Literally just wrong. Okay, we obviously have four unique sets of data, so that is good. We have successfully made four sets of data. Interesting. And then I think I'm going to plot minimums now. Uh, we can get rid of the slide. We don't want it. Min. Four, five, four, five. Okay. 
so it does look like blue is mostly below green and then they switch halfway through it's 47 what's 47 plus 12 59 i can do that in my head yeah here's 59 so that is the node switch Okay, let's, uh, okay, uh, let's make it nice now. Okay. Um. Okay. It's the worst kernel to work in? Yeah, you're just jealous because you don't have it. We're going to actually go to a zero-based uh, y-axis. Because we're so close that it's actually not going to really distort viewing the data. Right? Normally, I wouldn't actually set... Um, I normally wouldn't set it at uh, zero. But in this case, we're so close to zero that it really isn't hurting the readability of the graph to do that. And it just gives a more absolute anchoring to the data. Um, okay. From uh, zero, zero to, uh, to 12. See what happens. We're going to actually go to 11.5. Are you hyped for Wrath? Yeah, I'm pretty hyped. Okay. Uh, back. Border LC. How do I do this? Set style. Rect. GNU plot. Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah. Okay, so we'll go from uh, 11.5 to 23.5. And then... Plus, actually, I, I think I want to slide everything over by one. Plus one. There we go. Hopefully I can do math on zero, but I think I can. We should now have our last data point at uh, 96. 95 because we need to skip one. Okay, that makes sense. So that's now a 96. There's no data at zero because there's no core number zero. And then core number one did not participate in the benchmark, so it's just not there. Um, so that is now accurate. It, assuming we assign each core a number, and then this drop should occur uh, at 48. I actually like them one index, to be honest. I or zero indexed cores. Um, so that's 47, then 48. Okay. Now it lines up with what I would expect. So now 
from 11.5 to 23.5, we're going to color. And that means that 24 will not be colored. Correct. Okay. And then we're going to do the same thing. This is going to be from, uh, I guess, uh, 47 and a half. So 47 plus 12, 59. Wait, 23 plus 12, 35. We have another one. We're missing another one. Wait. No, 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 no. I think that's the type. Okay, uh, so we go to 12. We're going in pairs of 12. So we go to 24. Then we skip the 36. We go to the 47 and a half. Then we go to 12 beyond that. This is 59 and a half. Then we go 12, 12, uh, 83 and a half. And then we add 12, that should be 96. Uh, okay. Did I miss that? I did something, what the fuck did I do wrong? 24 plus 12. This needs to start at 36 and a half. Okay? Or 35 and a half. Ends at 47 and a half. Let me skip 12 and then we do another one at 60. Which is 59 and a half. Up to 71 and a half. And then we go to 84. Okay, this should now be right. All right, this time for sure. That is better. So the first one on here, okay. So now when we look in here, we'll see that the first half is not highlighted and the second half is highlighted. And we used 0.5 so that the divisions are between boundaries instead of on a boundary. So basically everything in the non-shaded portion is a uh, Numa node four. And everything in the, uh, so if we look at, we're looking at reads. So here's the read performance of four. And here's the read performance of five. And you can see that there's a flip halfway through. And that's not a coincidence. There's some weird shit happening here. But shit happens sometimes. But there's a flip. Okay. Okay. That is dank. And yeah, so subnuma stuff really is small. Really is minor. Um, so what's the what's the fastest we ever accessed? Yeah. So the fastest accesses from 4 are all in four. So if we look at the five axes, and then in here, the fastest axes are here. And the difference is like five or six cycles, which is fucking crazy. How many averages are we doing? A thousand of a hundred? That's pretty good. Let's try looking at averages. Yeah, there's definitely some interesting noise here. I'm back. I'm better. Teddy bear gave me in a blender. There's a weird spike here. That's so strange. All right. Well, we have our data. 
This is actually really cool data. Um, wow. So what are these at up here? Um, these are at uh, like 561. Let's actually look at only uh, read force, right? So they're slightly more expensive over here. It's really cool. Um, so this is averaging, I would say something in this range. I would say like right here is kind of average, which is a 560. And then down here, let's just say we're averaging right about here, which is 200. Yeah, so reading memory from a different node is literally 300 cycles more expensive. <laughs> you go from a 200 cycle access to a 560 cycle access. It's literally, it's, it's like three times slower, which is fucking insane. It's it's not one fifty percent. It's it's three hundred percent. I mean, it depends how you do your like percents are kind of tough, but it's it's three times more expensive. Like roughly, it's two point eight x, two hundred eighty percent. Well, a hundred eighty percent because subtract off the first. It depends how you do the percentage. <laughs> Everyone does it slightly differently. <laughs> That's one reason I hate percentages. Anyways, this is kind of exactly the data, uh, the plus in front. Yeah, I agree. I agree with you. Uh, writes, it's less of a deal. So writes, it seems to be the same shift. You know what? Our benchmark is not stable. These writes should effectively overlap. And they don't. So let's see if we can fix that. I'm not shy of saying a picture. Let's print the total bench time. For real, percentages are stupid. Me and girlfriend playing chess up in the Whoa. Whoa, I think we we could have started to maybe have overlap in our benchmarks. Uh, uh, let's increase our stat iters. No, let's increase our averaging iters. Slumber party. Uh, 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 uh. Let's look at reads. Let's see if our reads are stable. EU waking, ugh, EU, uh, EU, more like the EU. Close an app, no. Me and my girlfriend playing just up in my couch. I in a kind of lingus on the couch. Zero to eight. Uh, 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 slumber party. See what happens here. We don't need eye fence. Eye fence is ridiculous here. Okay.
What's the most expensive one? I don't know. This is fine. We'll multiply it by two and then multiply it by eight. Um, yeah. Oh, and we can go by core ID. That will make... Now it's a good benchmark. Maybe. Should be a little pause. Then the twos come in. Then a pause. Then the threes come in. Then a pause. Perfect. That's what I want to see. One eighty five two ten. One ninety six two ten. Okay. We should probably print some fucking data so we know what we're doing. Hmm. I don't know what data I want to plot yet, to be honest. Um... I think I want to do Oops. Celebrating bullshit. It's a bullet. We're just gonna we're just gonna reorder the data ourselves. Okay. Yeah, all right. All right, chat. You yeah, you got what you wanted. Uh this is gonna be the node that we're allocating in. I'm not bitch. This is core R node. It's a fence to me. Coulda, shoulda, woulda, fuck it. Um, what? Min, mean, what? 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 Oh, no, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. 
It's fine. Whew. Wait, what? Location ID first. Now it's good. All right, this is the one. This is the one. This is the one. This has the data, and then we can process this data and format it. I want there to be a pause between each one. It must be a sedative. Okay. This could get gruesome, bitch. So what do I want to, how do I want to plot this data? Cause now I have everything. Only reads though. We gotta do this twice. Two or three. Um, what do I, how do I want to graph this? Come on. Come on, data. How far did we get overnight? What about measuring the difference between the IM the two IMCs? Yeah, we have that now. Um Huh. Can we do this? Um, what's the difference? Basically none. Uh, uh, bu 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 96. Four, three, four. We could try and make a heat map. That might be fun. Bitches. He's a scared boy. He's a little boy. Let's see. Doop, 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 doop. Come on, data. We're almost there. Almost there for reads. That's a 4-4. Four, four. Okay. Um. How do we want to plot this data? 
Um, this is such a beautiful benchmark. It's just so primitive. There's no pointer chasing. There's no weird things to dodge caches. It's just a pure... Quiet benchmark. I really like this. Hmm. Come on. Couple more points. We can start prepping it for right. Let's prep it for right. Okay, uh, that's a right, and then we're gonna change nothing else. That's it. We just now we're gonna do a right benchmark, but uh, let's collect this data. Please don't be off the screen. No. B C. Uh, w data all to all, or this is R data all to all. Bam, bam. Data is saved, so we can run this, build it, and run it. Here we go. Now we're doing uh, right data all to all, and this might need to run longer. Still a pause. Yeah, there's a decent pause there. We're really razor thin on our margins here, but it's okay. We're not intermixing data, which is good. Um, that would be bad. Okay. All right. Um, so we're going to do, we'll make a copy of our data all to all. We'll make it our data dot text, our data dot text, and then we'll sort you. Okay. Now, let's uh, start playing with some plots. Plots, our data dot text using uh, zero plus one. Actually, we can just use, uh, now we can just use uh, two, which is the core ID. Three is the current node ID. Four is the target node ID. Five is the data for that. Yep, so obviously that data is unreadable because we have eight data sets here. Um, so what do we want to do here? Can I do like uh, GNU plot filtering? I've never done this, so I'm curious if it will work. Are you still getting pauses? Yes. And I think that pause will just grow rather than shrink, which is my main concern. Um, are you the same Gamoza that uh, commentated the live CTF? Yes, I am.
You're a narrator for live CTF? Yeah, only for two hours or so. Like an hour and a half, I think. Nice, I really enjoyed that. Hell yeah, I'm glad you did. That was kind of a, a random thing. I kind of wasn't expecting to do that. Jordan just hit me up and was like, you want to commentate this? I was like, I don't know what I'm doing. Sure, fuck it. I don't care. I can look like an idiot. He had like a few seconds delay, which is pure gold. Yeah, so basically I was watching what was about to be streamed through someone screen capping their OBS on Discord and their OBS was showing like the split window of like what's live and what is like in the queue to go up next if he did a camera change. So like it was like a window in a window in a window to watch. So I literally couldn't read what was going on. So I had to use the YouTube stream because that I could full screen. Um, but I was the only remote commentator. They didn't really go out of their way to like, like I know they have the capacity to do it, um, but they just, they weren't gonna like fuck around all day just, just to like make the one or two hours that I'm doing this 40 hour thing easier, which is totally fine. It was a little scuffed, but they they did not intend for uh, me to be doing it remote. <laughs> this date is almost done? Fucking crazy! Uh, what do I want to do? 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 Um. 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 <laughs> yeah, it was pretty fun though. It add it the scuff setup added to the entertainment value. So I think that I'm gonna want to parse this in like a pithin. Well, I can do this. Check this out. Chat, do not do this. Zero, uh, one, two, three, four. Node number is four. If the node number is equal to four, then print five. Otherwise, do one over zero. I filtered it. Um, wasn't LP lines points? Oh, LP is not going to work if I skip data like that. Let's see if I can do this. Okay, that's not hot. <laughs> mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yes, uh, that is the data. Mm-hmm. Yes. Is it a mutual baby? Huh. Let's try, uh, let's try, let's look at, uh, zero. Actually, let's go the other way. Let's go and say if the core is not equal to, which is the core, which is uh, one, if it's zero, or if it's one, yeah.
so now last time it was Cray Sean. Now today it was Clitoris the musical. Uh, now we're gonna print by the note ID. One, two, three, four. The fuck is this? Oh, wrong thing. Four. Okay, so this is printing the access latencies for core zero to the other nodes. There you can see a more definitive jump. The, the sound of revenge. You know? Uh, okay, so what's going on here? So there you see that jump, and that's what we want to see. The axis cost to different nodes from core one. Core two is going to look the same way. Oh, core one might be on node one, is it? All right. Or core two. No, core two is on two. Oh, they just happen to be really close on this one. Just coincidentally. Um, we really only care about nodes, so plotting everything here is a little verbose. Um, I ain't even up bad at math. Hmm. What did I want to do? What do I want to do? I was thinking a heat map would maybe be fun. Ty, you want to make a heat map? Let's grab this data before we lose it. Okay, we have saved all that data if we care. We don't care. Um. We're going to now do node to node stuff, which means that we can do slightly better sampling. Um, how do I do that? Uh, I manually make a list. That's how I do it. Let's. Allowed is equal to, this is the list of allowed threads to benchmark. Big fucking brain, BFB. Um, uh, one, so we can have one, we can have four, we can have 24, 28, I see a pattern, 48 and 52, uh, 72 and 76, and then, oh, that's it, that's everything, that's eight. If thread dot core ID if allowed contains this. If it doesn't contain this, halt. Okay. Mm. 
is doing rights. Failed to build kernel. Yep. That it did. Because that's a ref. If the core ID is not allowed, halt. So we silence those. And yep, we just have these benchmarks. Honestly, we might be able to just do these benchmarks in par parallel, to be honest. Okay, so what we really want to do is benchmark... Um, Uh, uh, let pause is equal to allowed dot iter dot find dot position dot unwrap get the uh benchmark ID or something like that. I don't know. Uh, just deref this a couple times. Uh, position. Is it not position? Oh, it's just already the position, isn't it? Is that is that what find does? Find on an iterator returns. Searches for an element that matches a predicate. Nope. I think I do want position. Yes. Get the position of our core ID. And then, uh, println, um, to be honest, we don't really need that, but we have it now. Uh, node ID... So new line, new line, quote, this new line, uh, thread dot node ID. And then this is going to be the pause. There we go. There we go. Now we're making progress. That doesn't need a new line. Node ID, uh, another end quotes on that. And then here we go. Here we go. So now what we have is the target node min max. There we go. There we go. That, that was not that hard, chat. We can just print them this directly. There we go. There's our benchmark. Okay, and then we can print the uh, node that we're coming from. Get the node ID of the current node. Get the node of the target node that we're hammering. Ooh, 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 ooh. Let's allocate every time. Let's allocate every time. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's allocate every time so we get a different address. Just in case, like, addresses or something matters. Then the minimum will be more minimumed. So like 183, 195, 183, 51, 195, 183, 195, 183, 195, 183, 195, 183, 195. If we move this out, I don't think it's that consistent. Two oh eight, two ten, one eighty three, two ten. 194. Yeah, let's go! Let's fucking go! It is address dependent. It's 100% address dependent. So now we're going to keep allocating for each stat iter. Holy shit! 
Yes! Let's fucking go! That's gonna try... We're gonna try a thousand different physical addresses and a thousand different virtual addresses. And that's really gonna change things up. I wanna do more. I wanna do more. Um, how long... Okay. Fuck yeah. 183.90... Yes! Let's go! Node 1. A 191-195. You know what? It does feel like the back half of nodes kind of have it harder. No fucking way. We'll do node in 4 to 5, so always node 4. So, I have a hypothesis that the right memory controller is worse than the left one. We're seeing that here. 191, 195. So, remote is 195. So, here we see 183, 203. This one, it's going to be like 201. Yeah! What the fuck? Why is the... Node local accesses for nodes on the right side are super scuffed. It's always like 183, 203, and then this one's like always... That's so weird. Oh, I can't wait for this data. This is some good data. This is good data. This is really good data. There's a 183, a 203. Next one's going to be like a 195, 191. Then we're going to have a 183, 203, or like a 1, 183, 203. And then this one, in the later position, it's going to be a 198, one, like, why is the right node so scoffed? Well, let's look at the averages, actually. 196, 209, 202, 199. Why are... The right memory controller is so scoffed. And we're going to see a pattern. No fucking way. How do we find patterns in literally everything? It's almost as if they're designed by humans. I think we can leave those strings in there. To be, uh, we'll leave the. I don't think the strings will affect uh, GNU plot. Um, plot data dot text using uh, one two three uh, with image. Fuck yeah. Okay. Uh, GNU plot image text. Um. Um. Whoa, can I do this? Uh, Data.txt using one, two, three with labels. Yeah, let's go! E-Z. E-fucking-Z. And then I think we'll push all the data up 0.5. We'll move it over by 0.5 for both. Okay. Because GNU plot centers and masses these, I guess. Oh! 
Oh. Oh. Okay. Yeah, dude. W look at this. 183, 191, 183, 191, 183, 191, 183, 192. Like, holy shit. Um, X label is the, uh, requesting node ID. And this is the target node ID. Target node ID, requesting node ID. Um, so when zero hits zero, it's 183. When one hits one, it's 191. Like, I don't understand why it's scuffed on that side of the node. 183, 183, 183, 183, 196. So going across... 195, 203, 203, 203, 203, 196, 195, 198. So there's some weird outliers here, which is so strange. I would expect that the these pairs would be exactly the same, and then across the pairs, they wouldn't be. I don't think the other data will... Mm, the other data kind of has this L pattern. L, 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 L. Maybe. Maybe has more of an L pattern, which is kind of interesting. 543, 542. 537, 528. Five... Uh, okay, so here's a... 30, 27, 28, 43. 28, 23, 27, 43. So these are definitely in like little quadrants. Huh. Hmm. Um. Can I say like font 16 on this? Can I get a bigger font? Oh. Mm. Font size? Is it already 16 or did that just do nothing? It just did nothing. Okay, cool. All right. Um, hmm, hmm. Okay. Unless I need to say font size sixteen. Font name monospace. No, that just doesn't, it just doesn't do anything. Okay. Uh, what if I do like set style label? Can I do that? No. Um. The 
that's there's definitely a pattern it's it's interesting because node zero node zero is always faster to access itself than anything or or the first node of a of a physical package so this node is fast and then it's a 195 so there's actually so two requesting three is more expensive than three requesting two and there there seems to just be different properties on these that's so strange. They're kind of the same on the first node, but then they really start to deviate. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, set, uh... What? Oh, let's try this. Font monospace eight. They need quotes. Hey! Too big, too big. Honestly, we just have like too many sig figs, I think, here. Um, I think I can printf. Oh, there we go. And can I set a color? Mm, maybe. Um, now we can go to twenty four. There we go. There we go. Data. I need quotes for the color. I don't think so. No. Un unexpected uh, token. Font color. No. Help plot. Plot. How do I help on that? Um... Style. Uh, style. Okay, so we can do labels. I don't even know where it's documented. Help label. Font. Yep, okay. It's just, okay, it's this. This time? Shit. Expected a color spec? Is this is it this? Yeah, okay. 
Green? Oh! Surprisingly readable. Um... Huh. I wonder if I can... Help set... Help label. So you can do a set style text box? fuck is this? What is this? I'm in a box. Boxed? Okay. Boxed BS2? Uh, boxed, uh, boxed, 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 fill color blue, uh, fill color, no, it's FC, text box FC blue? No. I, I don't know. There's, there's, it's, it's fine. It's fine. Let's, uh, we can probably find a good color here. Something that will be readable in all the cells, potentially. I didn't tell a difference in that, but I can't see red, so. Uh, so that's not... Okay, um... Just gray? That's kind of ass. Um... Maybe like a lighter gray? Okay, that's really ass. Uh, let's add more green to it. Or blue? No, we want more green to it, I think. Well, to me, I'm gonna tell... Anything with green is gonna be really readable. Um... That's kind of an ass color. Um... Hmm. I don't know. It's 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 semi-readable. It's not great. Honestly, just like straight red might be good. Like F twenty twenty. Red's a little aggro. You're like mm -mm. brown. Okay, that's unreadable. All right. Uh. I mean, that's not bad. It's, it's pretty bad, but it's fine. It's passable. Okay, so... Yeah, there's a weird pattern there. Why, though? Why, though? And it's weird that there's a 200, it's 2 or 350 for all of these. 192, 198, 183. So local is always 183 on the first one, but then it goes to 191. The fuck is this? Can you explain what the heat map is showing? It's the latency of accessing another uh, of of accessing node to node memory. Um hmm. Latency and cycles. It 
it's really weird that Uh, three to four. So node three, accessing... There is an advantage to accessing node local stuff, but it, it's... This is really weird. Let's do it for rights as well. Do we have that data yet? Yeah, we literally have the right data, don't we? Uh, that's what we just ran, isn't it? No, we don't have right data. Let's get the right data. And we're looking at, uh, one, two, three. We're looking at minimums. Let's actually take a look at averages. So here's minimums. Let's look at averages. Uh, which is uh, four. Let's see if this changes it. I think it will. Whoa! So now, these are the scuffed ones. These are all 210. 195, 196, 196, 198. Still a little scuffed on that, but this is really scuffed. What the fuck? We would expect that these two match, these two flip. So we'd expect if this is 210, 196, that this would be 196, 210. And it's definitely not. The fuck? How did I exit that? Oh, I just made another. How did I? Well, I just I just made another T mux. Oh shit. Oh okay. Oh god. Oh uh, okay. We're good. Okay. That was monkas indeed. This is now right data. Let's take a look at right data. What the fuck is this? God damn it. All right. Well, uh, that's interesting. Um, yeah, so I don't... 
Oh, there are weird patterns here. Dude, these patterns are wild. What? Dude, that's so crazy. Hmm. It almost feels like my Numa information is wrong. I don't, I don't get it. I mean, clearly the blues are hitting where I would expect blues. Why do those flip? Why do they flip every other? What the fuck? That is at the orange up. Dude, I don't understand what I'm looking at. <laughs> Hmm. Oh my god. It makes sense, I think. Um, where's that die shot? <laughs> well, we don't want the die shot. We actually want wiki chip. Um, we want, uh, I guess, Cascade Lake. Um... <laughs> Do I...
I don't... Uh... Did I think it's the UPI links? Like, I think it's because the this UPI link is close. Like, one memory controller is further away than the other ones to the UPI links. And the way that the UPI links are set up on the motherboard is in this inverting pattern. Which would mean that this is, like, let's say hypothetically that if we're on physical processor zero, which is either node uh, zero or one, so we're on the first physical processor and we want to access processor number four, it is faster for us to access node six instead of node eight. And these are basically the same numbers, I would say. Same with here. It is actually a little bit faster to access it from the other node. And yeah, I think what we're actually measuring is like, we are on... So basically these... Every odd number here is likely, and I'm pretty sure, is the right side of the chip. So basically, we are noticing differences between these cores. I wonder if the right side of the chip has to go through these UPI links. And it depends how they're wired to the other processor. Because I'm guessing, well, no, there's, th wait, yes! Yes! There's three UPI links per processor because each physical processor has a connection to every other processor. So there is this, dude, this totally makes sense. This totally makes sense. So, uh, you have three processor connections from your given processor. So let's, let's, uh, let's, let's cut this up a bit. So let's think about it as uh, set X range zero to two. So this is, this is the perspective of one processor. So this is the access times for one processor to all of the other nodes on the system. So to access, there are going to be three UPI links. Oh, God, that's fucking sick. There's three UPI links. So our processor has three different links. And that is going to link to one of the UPI links in the other processor. And it depends which link we get. UPI is a socket to socket interconnect. Yes. So we have three of them because this is a four way scalable processor. And since this is a four way scalable processor, each processor needs to have a connection to the other three directly. And so there are three different UPI links. This UPI link, these, this 2x UPI link here, is able to directly access the memory controller without doing a traverse, without routing. This UPI link must route. You have to go vertically down, and then you have to route that at this node and switch over. And that routing is going to be motherboard dependent, right? I don't know if the spec requires a certain routing of link to link, but basically... Outgoing, so outgoing, that's what we're looking at here. We're looking at, we are, request, we are requesting node zero or one, which is physical processor zero. 
So outgoing, we have three different connections to other processors. Now on the receiving end, so imagine now we're looking at the core for the receiving end. We randomly, it's physically determined, but we either have our processor comes into one of these two links or one of these. And so I would suspect that we will see two fast connections and one slow one. And it's weird that there is so. One of the links is closer to the memory controller. Yes. That is fucking wild. That's so cool. So we actually, we know, I'm going to assume that it, left node is zero and right node is one. Basically the odd one is right and the left one is even. And in that case, we know that from processor zero, our link to processor one is left biased because our access is to left memory is faster. And for n processor two, we are right biased. And for processor three, we are left biased. And that makes sense because two out of three, this like mathematically makes sense in that it's more likely two thirds of the time we come into this. And given that this was designed by a human, they're going to evenly route these and that makes sense. So basically, Accessing the first node um, is more often than not faster than accessing the far node. I think. Or the opposite. <laughs> That's fucking crazy. Wow. That's a beautiful pattern. Okay. But these memory controllers are directly connected. That's interesting. Yeah, so we route into here to here. So, wow, so routing to that memory controller versus routing to that memory controller is, is this difference. That is insane. Huh. I mean, that's a really long distance. Um, ooh. Can we determine what physical cores are disabled through this? I wonder if the slower ones Is that why the difference between the yellow and brown is more or less the same as the dark purple and the light purple? No, the dark purple and light purple Ah, wait. Yeah, wait. So dark so this dark to light is literally shooting across here. It's literally, uh, well, not necessarily. It's more specifically one of these cores to the, it's more specifically one of these cores from this side to he, oh. It depends on where the core is. because we're doing our benchmarks from probably top left core on average. And if we're benchmarking from top left core, we're really close to the UPI send. We might have to route through this UPI where you have to go up and over to this UPI to send, depending on the processor that we're addressing from the sender. And then the receiver, 
Well, the receiver is not a core, it's a memory controller. So basically, I think we're on this core. So we're sending vertically up. We actually have to route down to here. We, we probably could notice a difference. Um, we don't necessarily know what core we are on. We, we know that we're on the left side or the right side. So odd number nodes are left side cores. Even, or even number nodes are left side, odd numbered are right side. The memory controllers, odd numbers are right side, even are left side. So we're, we don't know what core we are. We could be any of these cores and we're measuring the, the distance that the cost it is for us to go from our core routed to the memory control. Let's say we're, let's say that we're this core. This is the, this is the side that's doing the read or the write. If we're this core, we have to route down to here if we want to access the local memory controller on the local node. That is a purple, right? That's, it is anything in the diagonal, right? This diagonal is you are accessing your local copy. Oh, interesting. So here we see a 494, 492. And I think I know why. I think... The dark to light purple is the core talking to the far on path. It's basically anything that's blue here is on the same physical processor, which makes sense because there's four physical processors. So it's you're basically measuring timing to yourself, timing to the other node the across the, the chip. And then the other is the same thing from the other half of the chip accessing itself and accessing the other side. So interestingly, up here we see a flip, and I think this has to do with where we are routing to and from. I think we just get an unlucky placement. I bet the read one also has this flipped, where it's more expensive locally. And I think it just happens to be the cores that we picked for the benchmark. So if you look at read data instead of write data, yes. Wait, no, no, it's faster. The diagonal should always be the fastest and it's not for the rights. Maybe we just got unlucky. We could have just gotten unlucky. Are we looking at averages or minimums? One, two, three, four. We're looking at averages. Let's look at minimums. Minimums are, I think, usually a better indicator, in my opinion. 62. Okay. And let's look at, we, oh, we're, look, we're plotting two different things. Right data. Here we go. Now, okay, for the minimums, this makes more sense, right? Minimums are more likely to be, like, minimums are literally, like, we got really lucky. We were the first thing to send off. We were the first thing in the ring buffer. We were the first thing to be handled, right? And this makes sense. The diagonal is universally across this diagonal. It is the fastest access, which makes sense. <laughs> um, what's interesting, oh shit. Oh my God, okay. So here's, here's what I'm thinking. I think, so we see that the, uh, the second node is always slower. And here's why. Hypothesis time. So we're getting 447, 459, 449, 459, 447, 457, 448, 462. The reason that the second one is slower is because 
we are picking one in four. We're per, we're picking like the first. I think we are most likely picking this core and this core on a given thing. This core can route to its memory controller directly. This core cannot. This core has to take a path. So I would hazard that there is a core on here. It could be any of these. There's one, two, three, four, five. So there's guaranteed to be at least one core because remember four cores are disabled on my processor. Um, and actually this is not accurate. That, uh, that graph is not accurate. Let's just look at the actual, uh, die shot. Um, I don't think it's four. Um, I think it's the 501. Which is this next one. So, uh, are we loading the other one? No. We want the five. Okay, so, um, okay, so, we are, um, let's, um, so there are one, two, uh, one, two, three, four, five, there's guaranteed to be five processors that uh, actually, six. There are six processors for a given half, which are guaranteed, six processors which are guaranteed to be directly connected, uh, and there's three that are, like, close. Okay, um, interesting. So I think we are just picking a bad processor for the other testing node. I think that's what's happening. So let's go do everything, okay? <laughs> let's just do it. Let's just do it all. Um. This is now going to be a uh, thread core ID. And we're going to probably have to cut down on those averages. That's fine. We're amortizing, let's say, 500 times 100. And the cost of the RDTSC is probably like 20 cycles. Yeah, it, this should be fine. And we're comparing relative to relative. So, uh, okay. So we're going to go through. We're going to print uh, the, the node, the desk node. And then... The thing that surprised me the most in this stream is you got GNU plot to generate a graph like that. No, GNU plot is fucking great. Like GNU plot is really good. I've never really had major problems with it. Um. Okay. Let's just uh, thread core ID.
Is this good? We might have to process this in Python, but I think this is good. Uh, this is fucking crazy. Keeping me. Uh, we don't need that print. How noisy is this data going to be? Let's do twos on these. Drop these down to eights. Eight dot twos. Node can be a, a two is fine. Two and a four. Okay. Okay, they're overlapping, so we just have to update. Let's just increase this. Million cycles? Uh, that's not going to be enough. 10 million cycles. Obviously, that's not enough, so let's try this. That's not enough. Really? 100, 100? Okay. Node times 24 plus core ID over two? I think so. I think that's unique. Enter BC. This is fucking awesome. Okay, so let's do, um, Okay. Okay, so, um, how do you do a function in GNU plot? How do you, uh, define, uh, oh, is it literally just this, um, X, uh, I guess this will be like no node uh ba 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 node core and this will take a node and a uh this is a a core and a node and it will take the node multiplied by 12 plus the core
right? Uh, two, one. Ever do parens? Fuck yeah. Core, uh, core plus, uh, node times 12 plus core mod 12? That's not necessarily right. Guessing int. Um, that's what we want. Let's just write a little Python -y thing. Uh, four line in open data dot text and w data dot text read dot read dot lines print line is it lines uh python process okay mm i'll we'll open another terminal now that's this, this, that. Son of a bitch. Do they, wait, I thought they flipped them. Read dot split line, it's read lines. Read lines doesn't fucking strip it. Are you kidding me? Why? <laughs> Core ID node. Uh, no, uh, from node to node. Min, max, uh, Line dot split white. Can you split white space? Is there a way to do that? Dot split. That'll handle the gaps in the padding, right? I guess we'll know that from X at like. X max. Nice. Okay. Perfect. So, um, what we want to do is, um, we want to give each core in a node a unique ID, right? Node cores is equal to, uh, this node cores for node. Uh, if from node, we'll just say node in this case. If node not in node cores, node cores node is equal to uh, set. And then we can do node cores node dot add core ID. Right? And there should be 12 in each, except for the first one. Yep, first one doesn't have 12. Everyone else will have 12. Default dict? I know. I know it's good. I don't know how to use it, though. That's in collections, right? Uh, node cores... And then I guess what we want is a NCID is equal to the node times 12 plus len of node cores node. 
minus one. Right? Oh, uh, wait, um, wait. Wait, what? What? But why? Uh... What? Forgot a curly? Where? One of this. Good fucking joke. <laughs> Why? Okay, um... Oh, um... Mm, 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 mm. Yes! This is correct. Because... We have a two node. So now we can print the NSID, uh, three... And uh, then we have the target, and then we have the oh, what the fuck is this? Average max. So we'll do X men. Leave it as a string. Now we have from two. And now the core number, some of these will be out of order. Yep, like 92 to 81. That's good. Okay. Uh, then we just sort it. Numerically. And then we output this to... Uh, data.txt let me plot data.txt and we do a one we'll just do a one uh one plus 0 0.5 okay not Terrible. Um, let's, uh, let's see if we can jail this. Zero to 96. Yep, we go to 96 and a half, but that's okay. All right. Huh. 
Ha! Huh. Is that still average data or single cycle of rice? This is averaged a little bit. It's averaged over 100, but let's see, let's see if we can get this data without averaging. Um, av average iters equals 1. Perfect. Um, the first axis is always going to be brutally slow. Uh, as we... Well, we were hot spinning. Maybe did a pause. Do a fence. I do actually think we can time singles here. Let's uh let's put some more fences in here. Uh timer. Wait for the reads to complete. And then time it. Beautiful. Benchmark time. This does let's do two in here and then we'll do Lapsed. And we'll put one outside. That's the same pattern we do here. We, uh, we fence, start a timer, fence, benchmark, fence. And this is fence, start a timer, fence, don't do anything, fence, end. So we're benchmarking the overhead and the cost of the timestamp counting and the fencing and it should be we can probably do this like 10 million times all right how how slow is that probably uh, probably 80 80 maybe 120 cycles let's say this will take like half a second to calibrate that's totally fine um But yeah, we're going to bink it. We're going to single shot that read. That means we can up stat iters, which means we can try more allocations. Let's warm up the memory a bit more than this. 4 blah and 0 to 100. Let's fence. Honestly, that, that's sufficient. That's fine. Memory stable. The write is complete. Let's do a read as well. Uh, we'll do read fence, right fence, fence. Okay. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> All right. Um, so now we are, are we're average, we're taking the min max and min, min average and max of the stat iters, which now we can maybe bump to a higher number. You get a fence, and you get a fence. <laughs> okay, they're still not mixing, so let's keep bumping this. The more data we can collect, the better. We're intermixing, so let's add another zero to this. Oh, we don't subtract off the overhead. Um, minus RDTSC, minus the cost of the benchmark itself. So now we're talking about absolute cycles. We're no longer talking about relative. Uh, and we should be able to prove that by enabling caching. So we're gonna enable right back caches on those and we should just see fours down the line.
Um, 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 um. Really? Really? RDTS see that. Uh, let's only do a read. We'll write to it above, though, to hot it up a bit. Let's only do reads. Huh. Um... Is that due to our spin? Our sleep? Hmm. Sleep ticks. Pause. Sometimes pause is bad. Six, four, four. Did one of them not calibrate fully? Maybe they should cal. Hmm. Let's do this. Just do this. It'll print the calibration out. Eighty-eight. This is eighty-six. Yes, it calibrated wrong. Wait. I think it's 88, okay? We might get some twos. That looks pretty good. I wonder what the tens or the eights or the expensive ones are. They only ever happen on the first iteration. I guess it's not warmed up enough. Let's loop a couple times, maybe. I don't want to spend too much time doing this, but let's just get the processor all fired up. I don't understand. How would those ever be high? I mean, we are literally trying to benchmark the cost of a single read.
I mean, the four looks good. I'm happy with the four. All right, let's add stat editors until it overlaps. Well, uh, with this benchmark... Oh, we can do a fuck ton with this benchmark, to be honest. I mean, we can do more than a million. Oh, we can't with the... Okay. Twos are about to come in. Yep. Okay, and then let's uh let's go back to this. Um now we're looking at reads. Here we go. One seventy two sixteen, one seventy six one eighty, One seventy six, one eighty. I think this is now pretty damn good data. How many loops are we doing? Ten thousand. Ten thousand. How many allocations are we doing? Ten thousand times eight times ninety six. Seven point six million four K allocations. Oh, that's fine. Yeah, we're just leaking 32 gigs of RAM. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Doesn't matter. <laughs> it's just a little bit of RAM. But that's good because we're trying a bunch of different virtual addresses. We're trying a bunch of different physical addresses. Um, vacancy sign. This is good. All right, I'm gonna let this run for a minute and uh, I'm gonna throw some food in the oven and do laundry, I guess.
All right. Is there data in yet? Holy shit. No? Are you fucking kidding me? Ten thousand allocations <laughs> per test. Oh, I love this shit. This is great. Does virtual address translation account for any overhead? Yes. The the. Both the virtual and physical addresses will kind of affect some of the performance properties. For reading all the way out to memory won't really be noticeable, but when you're like hitting caches, you can notice the difference based on the virtual addresses and cache lines that you're picking and evicting and there's a lot there's a it's a lot. <laughs> there's a lot. <laughs> Oh shit, it's already been 10 hours, are you fucking kidding me? I'm doing all of this to make like... a single image to put on a slide. So we've contributed about 1 60th of my, uh, of my PowerPoint presentation. Alright, that's a really productive, uh, 10 hours. Uh Oh, I didn't copy it to my clippy board. BC. Then we have to process the data. Then we can plot it. All right. That's weird. I'll try it with rights now. <laughs> Build and run. Wait, how fast did it download the kernel? It's like 106 megs a second. It's pretty good because this is connected on gigabit. I didn't even put 10 gig on the server for this testing. I should, but I didn't want to configure my 100 gigabit switch. It's a pain in the ass. I did for the first time. I bought uh, some RJ45 SFP connectors so I can do 10 gigabit copper. I bought four of them. So I can now connect, I have like three or four 10 gig copper nicks laying around. And like for like my gaming, my guest computer, um, I really wanted to have 10 gigabit on it because having one gigabit is cringe. And I only had copper in the wall and I wasn't gonna like fucking route fiber to some random room in the house for a guest, a guest computer. Um, so I put my 10 gig nick in it and then now I can plug in that. I can just use the copper in the wall because it's all cat six in the wall and convert that into the copper and plug that directly into the 100 gigabit switch. So I have a, um, I have a QSFP plus to SFP 28 converter and then I can, and then I can socket the SFP plus transceiver that converts it to RJ45 into that. It's it's quite a it's quite a stack, but it'll that I don't have a 10 gigabit switch. I only have one gigabit switches and a hundred gigabit switch. I have an old 10 gigabit copper switch, but it only has one 10 gigabit uplink, so it's fucking terrible. I can't even trunk it. It's eight ports, but if I could trunk it with a hundred gigabit, then I'd run that and just plug my copper into that. But I literally can't. 
So it would just saturate on its uplink. So it's fucking pointless. So yeah. <laughs> Pretty cringe, to be honest. Um, all right. But in it, I would expect both of these regions would be shaded. And they're kind of not. There is one, the first one's always pretty dark. Nothing at all. Uh, we'll say writes memory latency from core to Numa node on a quad socket blah with a sub Numa clustering requesting core ID. <laughs> Node cores zero is set. Is that the correct syntax for a set? I don't fucking know. Um, Node uh, Node zero core zero didn't participate in the benchmark. Uh, add it to the set. So it's empty in the data. Beautiful. Has to be iterable? Okay, there you go. Now it is. Can't find nothing at all. Now there's a gap at core zero. Perfect, because we didn't benchmark on core zero, because core zero is busy doing core zero stuff. Pizza signal. We are we are in pizza signal territory right now. That's for sure. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, we're definitely in pizza signal territory. <laughs> okay. There alone, find nothing at all. There alone. Oh. Okay, so rights I think will have slightly better data. Datum, Datoro. Um. Anything stand out here? So you can see that these areas, why are these areas light? That's what I don't get. I'd expect that these areas would be darker. The, the, two, the two quadrants, the diagonal should all be the darkest path. We're about to see some dank data. I'm so fucking good at generating data. Uh, let's uh, let's do this, okay? And then um, node mins is equal to this. Big number. And we'll do. Node mins. Node is equal to. Oh, we don't even have to do that. Well, we do. Big number. 
Very big number. Oh, it's this in fucking Python. Stupid language with global function definitions. Um, float X-Men. Yeah? FD is open data.txt for writing FD.write. This new line. Okay, and then we'll do for node min x min in node min. Node mins is actually um, Node mins is actually one of these bad boys. Node to node. Node to node. All right, we're making progress. Uh, for node two nodes. For two node min uh, x min in two nodes. Print the f node. Two node X Men. Sometimes I'm just impressed with how goddamn good I am at writing code. Okay, maybe I'm not. Uh, it iter, iter. Items, 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 items. It's items. I definitely did not just have to read chat to figure that one out. Uh... Beautiful. Now we can do label data. Oh, brrrrap. And good. Great. Works fucking great. Uh, works great. Node, uh, node times 24. And then we'll just add, uh, add 12 to it. That's gonna show the minimum for that region. And it totally is working. Totally, this is just not, just wrong. Okay. Min. <laughs> if node is not in node mins, node mins that, node, two nodes, two. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So why does this just not work even remotely at all? What did we do wrong here? The fuck did I do? Rewrite in JS, I'd rather die. Min. Node two node. Node two node, min, smallest. The lowest value. Node mins, two nodes. Uh, okay, hello. 
Oh, is it because they're not sorted? Is it because is it because they're not sorted? Um batch is this batch dot push add append stupid language who calls it fucking append batch sorted sorted Stored. Sorted. It is, it's sorting, right? That's 100% what it is. Definitely not coping here. Had nothing to do with sorting. Um, <sighs> data, label data. How is this wrong? Um, label data. Twelve. Whoa, those numbers get really big. Because it's times twelve plus six. Chat, why did no one catch that? That was kind of cringe. Oh, look at that. 170, 170, 180, 180. 170, 170, 180, 180. 172, 172, 80, 80. Fuck yeah. Now let's do write memory latency. Really wasn't that hard, chat. If you just told me how to write Python, we would have been fine. But unfortunately, I don't know the basics of Python. Okay, so now it's on writes. 448, 458, oh ho! Look at that. Yep. Yep, 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 yep. Fuck yeah, chat. Now we're making data. Labels are Minimum for NUMA node. Ah, ah, ah. Oh, that's beautiful. Oh, that's so beautiful. Memory access latency in cycles. And the label is the, the smallest of that node to node. Because there's eight nodes. So you see, you see each core requesting to each node, and then you also see the minimum for that node. This is some fucking dank ass data. All right, chat. Well, that was the goal of the stream. Uh, I'm not gonna really infer much information about this, but it's a dank graph. And, uh, now I'm gonna go to bed, because I gotta sleep. <laughs> so, see you around. Cheers.